Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Byrne. It's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. And I'm just checking in on you. I'm just checking in on you. Um, seeing how you're doing, seeing how your week's going, getting adjusted, trying to get comfortable here on the bed, trying to knock the podcast out before I take the kids to school, for God's sakes. By the way, by the way, old Billy Bitch Tits fucking moved down a notch on his belt in the right direction. Okay? I am on my journey. This is my journey. This is something that I need to encounter. I have to figure out why I was eating those ice cream sandwiches every night. Depression. Um, yeah, I'm going from Billy Bitch Tits to uh, Bill Bulimia. Bill Bulimic. Hi, this is uh, Mr. Bulimic. How are you? Is that, is that bulimia or is that the other one? Bulimia is the one where you get to enjoy the meal before you give it back. <laughs> is that what it is? I don't know. Anorexia is when you just don't eat. That's what it is. I don't know what it is, but I'm sure I'm, sure I'm messing it up. No, bulimia, yeah. Whatever. You know what I mean? It's like trying to fucking remember... You know, lefty, loosey, righty, tidy, and then you're like unscrewing a light bulb above your head, and you're like, wait, do the same rules apply when I'm looking down over? It, but now I'm like above it, now, but I'm under it. It's like I'm hovering over it, but I'm under it. You know, that's like my shit with like which 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 is the front of the stage, which is the back of the of, of I'm sorry of a stove. You know, to me, the back of the stove is is by the wall, and the front of the stove. I, I don't. I always have it. I always have it wrong. Now I don't even remember. That is the. That is the way it is. But for me, I was always standing behind it, for some reason. So the back of the stove to me was the burner closer to me, and then the front. Is, oh, whatever. See, people. This is why I became a comedian. This is why I never made it in carpentry. I tried to do carpentry. I lasted fucking eight days. I was just like, I do not have the gift. I have the brains. I could sit here all fucking, you know, years of my life and become and work my way up to being a mediocre carpenter. God knows that's what people want, huh? They want a carpenter that does an okay job. I'll tell you right now who cannot do an okay job this Sunday. Joe Burrow of the Bengals or Matthew Stafford. From the Lions and now with the Rams. That's amazing. Can you imagine if the Rams win it? And Matthew Stafford, after all of those years, being in that dysfunctional, abusive relationship that is being the quarterback of the Detroit Lions. I mean, who's kidding who? That is a... How many ex-boyfriends did that fucking bitch of a team leave laying on the side of the road? I'm trying to think of all... Greg Landry, Eric Hipple, all the way through Joey Harrington. Matthew Stafford has been like, he was the general, he is, he's probably the best Lions quarterback they've had since, uh, what's his face there? We got his book right here. Heart of a Lion, Bobby Lane. Bobby Lane, yeah. I, I, I would say that. Let me look this shit up. Let me look this shit up. The history of Lions quarterbacks, okay? And I'm going to tell you right now, there's going to be a lot of fucking real estate agents. <laughs> Whatever people do after your, uh, the quarterback of the fucking Detroit Lions. Um, now, I'm wondering, you know, as a Lions fan, you got to be rooting for Matthew Stafford because he did put the time in. But then also, you kind of got to be rooting against him because it's just like, you know... QB history. Um, if he wins it the very next year, it's going to kind of confirm. You know, it's going to kind of confirm what you always thought, that there's just something wrong with your franchise. All right. Since the great days of Bobby Lane, 1950, 51, all the way through 57, and then he, he joined the Steelers, I believe. We're going to get into my, okay, Greg Landry. Greg Landry made it from 71 to 74. 
And Joe Reed, I guess he, he was all of a sudden third string. They blamed him. And then they lie, right, we're, we're just fucking with you. Brought him back, 76, 77. Gary Danielson. All right, those years, couple years. Eric Hippel, Gary Danielson, back and forth. No one wanted to say it was the Lions' fault. They switched. That was right through 86. And then there was a guy, Chuck Long. They had a guy, Rusty. Give Rusty a shot. Rusty Hilger. And then, oh, God. Poor Rodney Pete coming out of USC. Da, 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 ba, 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 to bum, 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 the fucking Lions. He was there from 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, the Arsenio Hall show years, I believe. No, he was a little bit up there. The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson was 92. But I think Arsenio was still around. Arsenio was still around. Those years. The run and gun of the Bills losing every year. Arsenio Hall coming after Johnny Carson. Just putting this all in historical perspective with uh, Cape Fear, I think, was a big movie back then. Natural born history. Scott Mitchell, then 94 to fucking 97. Charlie Batch. Sounds like Yak, Charlie Yak. Ty Detmer was in there too. Honorable mention. Uh, Joey Harrington, 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005. Good day, sir. Jeff Garcia, backup. Somehow he got out of there and went to San Francisco. John Kitna, lasted two years. Dan Orlovsky. And then in 2009, along came a man named Matthew Stafford, who has had, he had the longest tenure as a quarterback. He started in two, for the Lions, 2009, 2010, Sean Hill got the starting job, and Matthew Stafford was back up. He played, then Stafford comes back, 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Ten straight seasons. He, he must own every fucking record Bobby Lane was, wait, Bobby Lane, 50, 51, 51, was eight seasons. No, 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. No, that is eight seasons. Wow. I don't know. Matthew Stafford, is he going to do it on Sunday? I'll tell you right now, the key to the game is going to be that offensive line. Can they protect Joe Burrow against the, the, the down four of the fucking Rams? What do you guys think? Do you think the golden boy, Joe Burrow, comes in and rightfully claims what should have been the Bengals rather than the 49ers all throughout the, all throughout the 80s? That should have been Bill Walsh on their sideline coaching. But the great Paul Brown, the only mistake he made turned out to be the biggest mistake ever for those Cincinnati Bengals. He thought Bill Walsh did not have the mental stability to be a head coach in the NFL. And he bad-mouthed him around the league and he let him go. Well, Bill just left. There was nothing else he could do. And he worked his way back into a head coaching job with the San Francisco 49ers. And he applied that offense that he came up with, with the Cincinnati Bengals. The, what became known as the West Coast offense was actually created in Cincinnati. I know I've said this before, but people don't listen every week. But now you know the rest of the story. And how ironic that two of their four Super Bowl victories of the 49ers in the 1980s, the team of the 80s, were against those Cincinnati Bengals. Da, 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 boo -doo, boo -doo. I got a root for the Bengals. I like the Rams. It's one of, this is one of these Super Bowls, you're just going to be happy for people. You know? I'll be happy for Matthew Stafford. I won't be happy for L.A. fans. They're just, uh, they're just not informed enough. <laughs> they really are. Like, I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know why it is so hard to find an informed Los Angeles fan. I don't know why. It's great when you do. Old school Laker fans from back at the Forum. People who grew up watching the Dodgers, hating the Yankees in the late 70s. I love meeting L.A. fans like that, but it is just so fucking rare. 
I don't know, Bill, maybe it's the company you keep. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. I don't know. Um, I don't know. It's just... If you critique their team, they just go, hater, hater. It just just never gets into a good sports debate. Your team are bitches. It's like, all right, I guess that's what it is. Okay. Um, Anyway, and the funny thing is, what is funny, Bill? Has anything been funny so far in this podcast? As you fucking list every goddamn jerk off that played quarterback for the Rams for the last 50 years? Hey, I'm into that shit. If you didn't listen to this podcast, would you ever know about Marlon Briscoe? Huh? You want to talk about the modern day fucking NFL, a guy who would have changed the game if they let him. Marlon Briscoe with the Denver Broncos. First starting black quarterback in the NFL. And you look at it, you're seeing Randall Cunningham and all of these other guys fucking 20 something years later. You seeing them play in that style right then and there. You seeing them be successful, and what did they do? They drafted a white guy. It made Marlon Briscoe a wide receiver. Another. This is a, this is like a segment that I'm going to make, or, or maybe you. I mean, you guys probably know more about this shit than I do. It, this segment is called "Horrific Fuck Ups" <laughs> in the NFL. Um, I'll start with two, the, uh, uh, the Denver Broncos letting, turning Marlon Briscoe into a wide receiver and shipping him off to Buffalo rather than keeping him as quarterback of the Denver Broncos. Number two, 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 the Cincinnati Bengals passing over the great Bill Walsh who had already invented the West Coast, what would become known as the West Coast offense because of Bill Parcells coining it in 1985 when his Giants beat the 49ers in the playoffs. And he said, what do you think of that West Coast offense now? Um, Thus giving credit that that offense was created in San Francisco. And I guarantee you, there's a bunch of 49er fans, you know, walking around with their winter jackets on in January because of that weird weather up there. I mean, sorry, in July. Let me tell you that time I took a vacation to San Francisco in the summertime like 20 years ago with my girlfriend at the time, and we both wore like summer clothes. And we, you know, we landed in Oakland because it was cheaper, and we took the BART over, and it was like the summer. And we were all excited. This is going to be great. San Francisco, we're going to have a great time. And we got it. We took the BART to the subway. And we came up out of the ground. And the only thing more shocking than how fucking cold it was, was the sheer amount of homeless people and the level of homeless that they had, just the way they looked. Like the, they look like 49ers. They look like miners. Like boxcar Willie looking for like jump on a rail car, like fucking beards. And it looked like you were watching a bad Hollywood movie and they needed like a homeless guy and they just like overly make the person homeless. Um, And we froze our asses off and we couldn't figure out what the fucking deal was. So we immediately go out and buy a bunch of shit, you know, sweatshirts that say San Francisco on them, you know, with the local fucking whatever. And then we went inland at one point to go to like Magic Mountain or something like that, some amusement park. And then all of a sudden it was hot as balls the second we got in there. Bill, does this story have an ending? Not really. Does it have a point? Yeah, they got weird weather out there. Anyway. Um, <laughs> horrific fuck ups in sports. I can tell you can just I can tell you right now the the Celtics when we had Red Auerbach were were always on the 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 good end of that. You know, the Robert Parrish trade, whatever the fuck we did to get Kevin McHale and Larry Bird's rights, we always seemed to come out on top with moves like that. I mean, Dallas Cowboys, I mean, I mean the Minnesota Vikings, it's obviously the Herschel Walker trade. You know, that was one of the great fucking, I can't even say it was great. I just feel like Jimmy Johnson the entire time was like, there's no way they're going to sign this deal. 
There's no way. Let me make sure I get this fucking deal right. What happened with the, with the Herschel Walker trade was the Minnesota Vikings agreed to give, as far as I remember, they, were, they agreed to give all like these just fucking um, regular guys up, like 10 regular guys up for Herschel Walker. So they thought that they were getting a steal. But there was something in there that if, if, if Jimmy cut, those, cut any of the players in the trade, he would get draft picks from the Vikings. So the second they signed it, he goes, you know I'm going to cut all those players. They're like, you wouldn't fucking do that. And they were like, yeah. And he took all the Vikings draft picks and had all the Cowboys, and that's how they built. Here we go. Herschel Walker trade was the largest, the largest player trade in the history of the National Football League. The deal on October 12th, 1989, centered, centered on sending running back Herschel Walker from the Dallas Cowboys to the Minnesota Vikings, including Walker and a transit... A transaction involving the San Diego Chargers. The trade involved 18 players and draft picks. At the time of the deal, the Cowboys were one of the worst teams in the league. The team finished the 1989 season with its worst post, post-merger record of 1-15, trading away their best player while the Vikings believed that Walker was the missing piece they needed to make a Super Bowl run. Thus, Minnesota originally felt that they got the better end of the deal. The Cowboys used the draft picks acquired in this trade to get players they needed to, to help them win three Super Bowls. Meanwhile, the Vikings did not make a Super Bowl appearance with Walker. Um, they kind of glossed over it here. Okay, the Vikings immediately assumed they got the better, not knowing at the time that head coach Jimmy Johnson was interested only in the draft pick and not the players. At a press conference at, after the trade, Johnson's bragged that he created, he committed, oh, he bragged right after he committed the great train robbery, but was criticized by various sports writers, such as Randy Galloway of the Dallas Morning News. Johnson waived Stewart in November of 1989, then told coaches to not start Solomon Howard or Holt, signaling to the rest of the league his intention to claim the draft picks. Viking general manager Mike Lynn eventually made another deal, letting the Cowboys keep the three players and all the conditional picks. Wait a second. All right. In the original proposal, Dallas agreed to give Herschel Walker and three draft picks to Minnesota. In exchange, the Cowboys would get from the Vikings five players, three draft picks, and conditional picks attached to each of those five players should they be cut by the Dallas Cowboys before February 1990. So that's what he did. He got three draft picks in five players. He cut those five players, so he got eight draft picks, plus all the picks that the Cowboys had. Uh, one of those players that Minnesota agreed to send to Dallas, Darren Nelson, refused to report to the Cowboys. Dallas then agreed to trade Nelson to, to the San Diego Charger for their fifth-round pick in 1990, which the Cowboy promptly sent to the Vikings. In total, this revised trade involved 18 players and draft picks. Uh... Okay, so the Cowboys got linebacker Jesse Solomon, linebacker David Howard, Isaac Holt, Alex Stewart, uh, a first-round pick in 1990, second-round pick in 1990, sixth-round pick 1990, Minnesota's first-round pick in 91, Minnesota's second-round pick in 91, Minnesota's first-round pick in 92, second-round pick in 92, Minnesota's third-round pick in 92. And all of those last ones... Okay, the first round pick in 91, condition on cutting Salmon, which he did. Second round, conditional on cutting Howard, which he did. Condi- first round pick in 92, conditional on cutting Holt, he did. You get the picture. Um, condition met by trading Nelson and condition cutting Stewart. So he just cut all of them and he got fucking eight fucking draft picks. Plus all the draft picks they had from being, you know, one of the shittier teams in the league. And what did he do with those draft picks? I think uh, players selected. Let's see. Pick acquired by Minnesota. Dallas's third round pick, and they just picked all bums. End result, uh, three Super Bowl wins. Here's the end result, what they got. They got Emmett Smith, Russell Maryland, Clayton Holmes, Kevin Smith, Darren Woodson. Well, I thought they got more guys than that. I mean, well, Russell Maryland was, and I heard of that guy, and Darren Woodson, Emmett Smith. That was a huge one. Um, all right, whatever. All I know is that they ended up winning fucking three Super Bowls in four years, and the Vikings have yet to win a Super Bowl. And that concludes. Then we'll follow up great fuck ups in sports.
with great fuck-ups in your own life. <laughs> All right, we'll keep the great fuck-ups in your own life light, okay, so they're not too depressing. All right, you want to hear about the one and only fucking flight I ever missed in my stand-up career? Um, I had an early flight. I didn't get enough sleep because I was doing spots the night before, and I went to LAX, the old LAX, when the carpet was all gray and all that shit before they gussied it up here for the fucking Olympics for the second time. A lot of people don't realize that, that the first time they, um, you know, before the 84 Olympics, they just had that horseshoe design on the bottom. It was only one level, and that was the airport. Then they were like, holy shit, we're going to host the Olympics. We need to double the size of this. Now, did they correct the horror, the outdated horror of, of that design where everybody just has to go in and there's nothing you can do? Uh, they kind of did because they created shortcuts in between, but they just doubled down on that horseshoe design and then just added another layer on top of it. Um, it's like if you built a split entry on top of a split entry. So anyway... Um, I went down to the airport. I was so fucking tired. I read my seating assignment as my gate. And I went to the gate that was the same as my seating assignment. And I went there and there was nobody there. And I always got there early because I was afraid of um, missing my flight. And uh, I was sleepy and I sort of nodded off. And then I woke up and it was like literally five minutes or 10 minutes before boarding and not only was there nobody at the, there was just nobody at the gate and i finally looked and i was like oh fuck and it was on the whole other side of the airport and i just ran like a lunatic and i had the ugliest luggage i remember i p- deliberately picked the ugliest luggage so it was easy for me to spot when it came down the fucking the baggage carousel and i was running with that fucking hunk of shit and i remember getting to the gate and I just see the lady, and she's just like shaking her head no. And I'm like, yeah, I did. Oh, I did. My seating is done. We're okay. She's like, yeah, no, no. It's too late. We already closed the door. But the fucking plane is still there. There's a hallway connected to the plane. Just open two doors. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do. Once the door is closed, the door cannot be reopened. And then I, I was like, you know, I was living on the West Coast and my gig was on Central Time. So I was already losing time and I also had to drive to the fucking gig. So rather than having plenty of time to get to the gig, I ended up getting on a flight that gave me just enough time if I drove like 85 fucking miles an hour for whatever car I got at National Rental Car. I always got the Dodge Neon for whatever reason and it always seemed to be in plum crazy purple. Um, and I remember getting in the car and just driving like a fucking lunatic. Didn't even check into the hotel, drove straight to the gig, got out of the car, walked in. They're like, oh, we were getting worried. And I'm like, yeah, what's the deal? And then just fucking walking out on stage (laughs) just after all of that bullshit. Hey, how you doing? How's it going? All right. Nice to be here in Duluth or whatever the fuck I was. And I did the gig, and I somehow, uh, I got through it. But there you go. That's great fuck-ups in my life. I know I have greater fuck-ups, greater fuck-ups than that. I don't know. I still don't, I've, I've talked about all of them in fucking therapy. Maybe that's a bad idea. Maybe you want to use this. This podcast is therapy. I have no idea. Um, you know what my, my wife was watching? Um... I got to take my kids to school. I'm going to take a break here for a second. My wife was watching a documentary on that, that white woman who was pretending to be black. And um, I might get her on for the last 10 minutes to talk about that because I just kept teasing her. Going, you know what question they're not asking in all of this document? They're asking all of the obvious questions. But I was like, Nia, how... Did this white woman, how did you guys allow this white woman (laughs) to become head of the NAACP chapter in Spokane, Washington? How does that happen? And there was all these people like after the fact, you know, when there's like a big upset in sports and then everybody actually, oh, you know, I had a feeling all these people going like, yeah, I knew there was something 
I was I was thinking this just looks like a white woman with braids. Everybody was saying I was kind of thinking that shit. I just think that that part of the country, people are just really polite when they're not having a Klan meeting or whatever. Generally speaking, there's a certain level of politeness to that area. Well, I just don't think that that would happen in, in, uh, in different cities. I think someone would just ask her, like, uh, what is your fucking deal? But anyway, my wife was watching it. And I was trying to go to sleep. It was just fucking, um, it was driving me nuts because no one would just, they kept arguing with her. And it's just like, you, you got to look at this person like she's a crazy person at a bus stop. It was, I, was, I just felt bad for her kids. Maybe it's not a good topic, whatever. I just felt bad for her kids because she just kept like, kept saying shit like I'm unapologetically black it was just like oh my god and like her kids were like really cool but they had this sort of low energy monotone way of talking and as I was watching more and more of it I was like I think this is like depression it was like a low level of depression and then they can't break away from her because she's like posting pictures of them and saying where they're trying to go to college and it's just like listen can you stop having them Pay the price for your sins. Um, I don't know. You know how human beings are. Human beings will actually get upset at her kids instead of at the person that did it, which is her, which is really, uh, I don't know. This podcast was fun till I brought that up. I will, uh, I'll see if I can get uh, the lovely knee on here. I got I to gotta drive the kids to school here. So I'll be right back. All right, you guys sit tight. And with the magic of editing, I'll be right back in like half a second. All right. All right, I'm back. Before we get into uh, a little conversating there with my lovely wife, I got a little read here. Um, Simply Safe, everybody. Today's episode is brought to you by Simply Safe Home Security. Have you ever wanted to know what's happening at your home when you're not there? I'm a big fan of the new wireless outdoor camera from Simply Safe. Yeah, it's great. They don't have to drill into your house. Uh, let you see what's happening. See what's happening outside right from your phone and alerts you when anyone approaches. So you always know who's there. Simply Safe has everything you need to keep your, your home safe from entry and motion sensors to indoor and outdoor cameras. Simply Safe, Simply safe is monitored 24 7 by professionally, professionals ready to dispatch police, firefighters, or EMTs to your home. Simply Safe is less than one dollar a day, and you can set it up around uh, up in around thirty minutes. There are no long-term contracts or commitments. You can customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at Simply Safe. S I M P L I S A F E dot com slash burr. Go today and claim a free indoor security camera plus twenty percent off with interactive monitor monitorina. Interactive monitorina. All right. It's a new word in my English language. Go to simplysafe.com slash burr. That's it. All right. And with that, look who it is, everybody. Walking oh, around the room. Look who it is. Look who it is. It's the lovely. Oh, you got to watch. It's the elegant. Yes. Nia, Keep Renee, going. Keep going. Hill. You got to watch uh, Housewives of Jersey with me. Just because you got to see... The jerseyness of the husbands in there. I just feel like you'll fight because you've seen a couple of episodes of it. I love New Jersey. And so, yeah, see, <laughs> I don't know. This last one, I just was cracking up and I was like, I just feel like this is something that Bill would enjoy. But anyway, thanks for having me on. It's great to be here. I love New Jersey because I re- they seem to have the same kind of meatheads that they had in and around in Boston. You know, right. I don't yeah. relate to Philly meatheads or New York meatheads, but when I go to Jersey, I'm like, these these people are the same kind of stupid I am. Really? <laughs> no, they are. They're like near the big city, but they're not in it. They get that suburban life, but they're not like these country bumpkins. And uh, there's a lot of fights. A lot of tough guys. You know, a lot of people like, not saying I was a tough guy, but I just, there was a lot of fights you know, in and around where I was growing up, a lot of guys with earrings. That's, that's kind of out now, huh? The one earring in the left ear. I, I don't know about that. I, I, I feel like it's not gone away, but I could be wrong. I have no idea. I feel like a lot of dudes have both ears pierced, and that's kind of the wave. 
Wow, I missed that. I went, I went the other way. I thought the earrings disappeared. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, Maybe because all my friends are old and they just got tired of having to keep oh, it not infected. Friends? Oh, God, all your old-ass friends? No, of course, they don't have any. Like <laughs> what are that. you talking about? My generation was the LT generation where you had your initials like a lightning bolt hanging from your left ear. Oh, well, yeah, that's definitely over. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now that you've trashed me, my age, my friends, and mm -hmm. uh, our jewelry styles. Let's talk about your race, since it is Black History Month. <laughs> We can yeah. That. So the other night I'm laying in bed or last night, whatever the hell it was, two nights ago, I'm sitting there and I'm trying to go to sleep. Um, and you were watching. I watched something dumb with you, mm -hmm. which I've given into. It's kind of fun. It's a great way to bond because mm -hmm. you can get a lot of conversation going on because what you're watching is so stupid. Um, Slash you talking through the whole entire thing with your commentary and me having to rewind because you just cannot help but like just be the commentator. I'm like, I this doesn't need a narrator. Like we can just watch it. <laughs> we can discuss after. I'm working on that. <laughs> okay. I like on Hulu because we don't have Hulu like without the commercials. I talk during the commercials. Have you noticed that? Yes, that's true. But I mean, it's better than my brother. My brother, wa I will watch things with my brother. It drives me crazy. And he literally acts like he's in it. Like, he'll respond to people, like the characters, and whatever lines they have, he's responding as if he's in the show. And I'm always looking at him like, what are you doing? You I don't want to, like, you know, bring up stereotypes here, but are you saying he talks no, to the screen? No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> Note to self, do not go to movies with Nia's I, brother. I set myself up with that one. <laughs> Oh, my God. That's so funny. But anyway, yeah. So what were you talking about? What, what we were watching? Yeah. So you, that woman from a few years ago, that white woman who somehow oh God. got past oh God. all the black people. And we, we don't. It's, it's Spokane, Washington. Spokane. You, you think it's Spokane. I thought it was Spokane. The E threw me off. Ba -na 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 -na. Everybody was talking about, what do you, you saying? She's all right. She's all right. She's all right. Spokane. Cocaine. Um, Eric Clapton. Oh, okay. Fuck Eric Clapton. Um, Whoa. Yeah. Why? Well, we can get into that another time. Um, what did Eric do? What did Eric, <laughs> don't say it like he's a good friend of ours. What did Eric do? He's like a kind of a documented racist. He's being a weirdo. Documentary. He has the papers. <laughs> he's got the paper, <laughs> the receipts, as they say today, the receipts. Um, uh, also, isn't he like some sort of crazy? I, I don't know. I don't want to get into it. Um, but suffice it to say, I, I'm not his fan. We can we can Google it after this. But we were watching the documentary, which I don't know why. When this documentary came out, we're talking about Rachel Dole is all. Okay. When the documentary came out, I was really wait. Is your last name going. Dole, and you're saying is all we're talking <laughs> Dole about? Is all no Dole is all or oh. something. When the documentary first came out, I was really fucking annoyed because I was like, why are they giving this psychopath any kind of a platform? And I didn't give a shit. I was like, I really. And you give don't people care. backstory who the hell she is. Oh, Rachel Dole is all is the white woman that pretended to be black, and she was like the head <laughs> of the NAACP chapter in Spokane, Washington. And she got exposed. She ascended that high before anybody noticed. She it's the funniest got, shit ever. After reporting a hate crime <laughs> that she was getting hate mail, which, you know, she actually might have been getting, but... They think they she put a banana her. on her windshield and then took a, a and, fucking and, yeah, picture of it. Other, and some other things. She wasn't the only one, um, I guess, She's getting hate the mail. Only one. But anyway, she got exposed by this reporter asking her if she was actually black, and she tripped up, and she was like, oh, well, I don't understand the question, and then she like ran away. And he was like, are these your white parents? Right, exactly. <laughs> and so it got into this whole you know situation about her being exposed. And so this documentary, which, like I said, that I had resisted because I really didn't care and I thought she was crazy. I was like, you know what? And why I started watch why I'm watching it during Black History Month, I, I can't, I can't, I, I can't defend that. Well, maybe um, you need to roll over in bed and see what you married. Well, maybe that's it. I was like, I'm looking at you and I'm like, why? Like, why are white people? So anyway, I um finally decided to watch it. And I haven't finished it. Uh, listen, this is what I'll say. If there's any white people <laughs> confused about why this was an issue for us, 
I think you need to watch the documentary. Black people, we, I think we already get it. I mean, I guess it was some... I don't know that we were confused. I think the only person confused is the subject of this documentary. Right. And she just refuses. She's now saying that she's transracial, that she transitioned. Yeah, she just made that up. And then well, the other thing I, I couldn't believe, you know, being a bald son of a bitch, Nia, I don't know if you've noticed that. Mm-hmm. You just go, sure. We got to get two microphones so people can hear you <laughs> trashing me. They can hear it. Okay. Well, the fact that her braids were so tight that her she was she was getting the receding. Uh, she lost her edges. She lost her edges. Uh-huh. I mean. That's how dedicated she was to this, this game. I'm going to say, you know, does she get any points for that? Any points for what? Well, you know, like Justin Timberlake, you know, nope. he kind of, nope. before the Super Bowl, nope. okay. <laughs> he brought sexy back. <laughs> and I believe absurd. black okay. people were air quote fucking with him. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, well, I would think, you know, if you were so committed to the cause <laughs> that you were fucking pulling your hairline back towards your spine. Maybe that's what threw off the people in Spok- Spokane. They were like going, well, look, no sensible that's exactly what it was. Person was, would do that. There was black women who are always the first to tell you when something is wrong. So, you know, I know people like to be like, oh, listen to black women. But but yes, because we we know. But because there was a there were women on there, black women who were like, I didn't want to be mean. But to me, she looked like a white woman in a black woman's wig. And that's exactly what she looked like. Not to mention the fact that she was making up her face in such a way that she looked a few shades darker. Sometimes she wouldn't. And sometimes she was she putting on was... bronzer like she was going to have like a flex off with Schwarzenegger yeah, in the late was, 70s. Uh, yeah, but it was it was I will say that it was a little bit illuminating to see why. She did what she did. She basically has childhood trauma that I feel like she still hasn't resolved. And, you know, you felt for her sons who never asked for any of this. And you feel really Oh, my for, God. Her sons are so cool. And they're just like monotone. Oh I think it's a form of depression. If she could just stop yeah. doing putting them out there and just yes. fucking leave them. Alone. OK, let's let them let's let's let's, let's wrap this up, Nia. OK, well, this part of the last part of the th- of the the show is called Help Bill Pass. Pass what? I well, what if I want to be the head of the NAACP That's in, not what in Boise? Passing is. reverse pass, trans passing. <laughs> I don't think there's any hope. Just for you. come on, no, like let's just say you know mm-hmm. I went out and I got some bronzer. Oh no! Right? Remember that? And time I went I to the to put t- I had it. Not, I had, it, I had it a toupee. <laughs> was. <laughs> I don't remember that. One of our first weekends away together years ago, I got some like, I don't know. It was supposed to be like like a sunscreen, but it was also sort of to help like bronze you. And I was like, let me just see. And like I sprayed like the whole can on you and nothing happened. Like you're tan resistant, even with like artificial Look, That's how real products. I keep it, Nia. Yeah. Like it's just your body is like, nope, there is zero, I, zero as, melanin as, uh, to enhance. <laughs> Cat Williams says, I am from the Isle of Caucasus. <laughs> Caucasian. Um, so you were saying if you were to get a toupee? Yeah, a two, a two, an ethnic toupee, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Something that John Amos could wear. And I was to put that on my head with the bronzer. You know the Photoshops are coming. Please don't. Bill- <laughs> Please don't Photoshop Bill in blackface. <laughs> William Transpass is the name. <laughs> Um, I just kept waking up and she was just saying like astoundingly, she said something that was just so fucking stupid. I just, I kind of respected it as a comedian because I knew how much it was going to annoy the crowd. They asked her how she identified. She said unapologetically black. She had to (laughs) fill out, she, she, at the time of this documentary, she had just had another baby and she was saying that whatever the mother identifies as, I mean, I don't know if this is across the United States or just in Washington or whatever, but whatever race the mother is, that's what they consider the child. So she was like, well, I will always be unapologetically black. She's saying this to her two fully black sons. They're not fully black because they're her kids, right? No, no, no. One of them is biracial, but the other one is actually her adopted brother. But then she became his mom. She took him on as a mother. Those poor kids. The the amount of confusion that they have to unwind. I know. It's terrible. It's terrible. So she Terrible. So she had, you know, the audacity 
to put on this form. She marks African American and white. And it's like just but she she is a very troubled soul. And the thing is, it's like she could have done she could have maybe not been the president of the the NAACP chapter. That's still funny to me. That that's like the music man where he had no instruments and he came to town. Oh, we got trouble. She came in. She's totally the music man. (laughs) She's the music man. But it's like she could have been such a powerful ally and been like, I went to Howard. I studied black history. I really, you know, have an appreciation and love for black culture. She still would have been annoying. Maybe, but it could have, but she would have been. Nia, what did you do if I met you and I said, I went to Howard. I studied black culture. You'd be like, shut the fuck up. I mean, yeah, it would not have gone much further than that because it just. So then why are you suggesting that that's what she could do? Well, because I'm just saying if she was really committed to, you know, the advancements of black people and equal rights and stuff, she could have done that as a white person. She didn't have to pretend to be black. That's the thing about it. Like you could have done all the wonderful things that you were doing and all the black people who care about her that were on there were like her heart was in the right place. She was doing so much for the community. She really did. But she lied about who she was. So she ends up undermining everything that she did. And that's what's really unfortunate about it is that she she undermined the shit. So this kind of finds, feels like a, a, a Hollywood movie before the redemption. Right. Where she turns it all away, like is this like Scrooge with braids? <laughs> Scrooge, the best Christmas movie ever. Um, um, all right, well, Nia, thank you so much for coming on yeah, and helping it, to explain that that oh. whatever the hell you were watching. I just yeah. kept waking up, going like, "Are you still watching this woman?" I can't finish it. I will eventually. I mean, I don't feel like I necessarily need to. I think I got it. But I was just curious, and it's one of those things where when stuff like this happens, I do like to get as much information as I can. I feel like this is the part of the interview where if I was Brian Gumbel, I'd take out my notepad and I'd start writing things down. So uh, what what do you think is the future? Finishing up your notes as you're asking me the question. In in Spokane, what is he writing? If (laughs) if I could ask anything of anybody in entertainment, what is Brian Gumbel (laughs) writing down? He's writing his follow-up questions to the to the package that we all just watched when he sits down across from the report. He asks them a question, they start answering, and then he writes it down like he's grading them. <laughs> Maybe that's my own insecurity. I'm like, why are you writing? I think he's, yeah, I don't know if we're meant to believe that he's just watching the package that we just watched, but I feel like when he's writing it down, he's thinking about his questions. So he's making sure to get it. Like this is maybe the third or fourth question that he's writing. I oh, guess. and so that's it's how. still a good show. It's it's a great show. I love real sports with Brian Gumble. And I love you. And I love you. All right, there we go. And that's Yay. the end of the interview. Yay! Yay. Valentine's yeah. Day, baby. <laughs> yeah, what are you getting me for oh Valentine's my God. Day? Wait, it's also almost our anniversary, right? Of what what anniversary? Of being together, not our wedding anniversary, but of like being together. Isn't it in February? Yeah, somewhere in here. Somewhere in February. Somewhere in there I met you. terrible with that, but somewhere in But February. I remember what you were wearing. When you first met me? Yeah. Really? Yep. What was I wearing? You had that white shirt on. That was not when you first met me. That was like our first date, maybe, or our second No, that date. was when I met you at that Italian bar that yeah, I then yeah, saw yeah. that guy drunk singing in that who's now been canceled. Chris Noth. Don't say his fucking name. <laughs> <laughs> Who that is, though. No, they you, don't. They don't. Okay. How many guys have been canceled? I'm oh. fucking editing that out. <laughs> I don't know if th- what happened. All these people weighing in. You didn't say anything happened. You just said you saw him there. That's what I'm saying. Right. Seemed like a nice enough guy. Oh Jesus! All right, let's wrap this. He up. He didn't try to grab on me. <laughs> What's he gonna grab on, baby? Um. Oh, oh, oh that was oh. mean. All right. All right, that's the podcast, everybody. Now we have the Bet MGM segment where me and Paul Verzi discuss our picks for the Super Bowl. Nia, Nia, off the top of your head, who do you like better, the Bengals or the Rams? I feel like I live in L.A. I got I to gotta go with the Rams. I feel like you live in L.A. too, Nia. <laughs> I got to go with the Rams because I'm an L.A. person now. All right, try, just try to say something football about it. What do you mean? Like the Rams, What do the Rams have to do on Sunday? 
I, they got to get out there and they really got to have a strong defense, an incredible offense, and they got to just drive that ball all the way down and uh, make those touchdowns. There you go. I think that was some great, some great insight. Really looking forward to the halftime show. Oh, that's right. Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and Mary J. Blige. And what about that chick from Spokane? You think she's going to be there? <laughs> she is going to be on Instagram Live, like, trying to twerk to it, and it's going to be awful. All right. As long as she's not spraying booze down on fans. Oh, my God. All right. This is, uh, okay, so here comes the Bet MGM segment. Enjoy. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Anything Better podcast NFL segment sponsored by BetMGM. And guys, it is sad to say, but we are in the last game of the season, the one they call the big one, and we cannot wait to get uh, to get to this. All right, it's the last game of the season, and we've got a super deposit match for our listeners this week. That's right. It's a big week. If you still haven't signed up for BetMGM, use bonus code BURR, B-U-R-R. Make your first deposit up to 560 and get it matched in free bets. That means if you deposit $560, you'll have $1,120 to bet with for the big game. It's pretty fucking cool. That's All right, insane. Down- no, it's nuts. It goes they, beyond pretty effing cool. It's insane. It's it's amazing, actually. Uh, oh, you could have a fun Sunday. Uh, download BetMGM <laughs> app and make sure Dude, you they're, see- they're like, what's this Henry Hill peeling off the cash for you? <laughs> uh, those gamblers listening to this in the shower. Those son of a bitches. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> use right, bonus back. code we'll BURR, into, B-U-R-R, uh, when sick, you sign right? up. So all you got to do is download the BetMGM app. Use bonus code Burr. If you throw in 560, they are going to give you double that 1120 for the Super Bowl. Um, So make sure you guys sign up and do that today. Now, Bill, people have been asking who you got, who you got. I know people are asking you who you got. And we did have a pretty nice regular season. So do you want to take the floor first? I think we should do like a minute or two minute explanations each on who we're picking and why. Do you want the floor or do you take the floor? Okay, you'll take the floor. All right. You know, sometimes you see a Super Bowl, Paul. Sometimes you just sit down. You don't care what the analyst is saying. You see it. And it fucking happens. It happened. It hasn't happened to me in a little bit. Last time I really remember it was when everybody said 49ers and I said the Ravens. Um, I remember that. Yeah. Well, this one, dude, I just can't get a vibe on it. All right. And I don't know what it is. I just, I am not buying. Was it Sean McVay? Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. I think he does what he does. I think the Bengals have a good enough defense to stop Matthew Stafford. I like Joe Burrow. This is mostly my heart, though, because I'm an LSU fan, and I just feel like this is an election. You know, like the dumbest thing ever is after they have the primaries and they have the Republican candidate and then the Democratic candidate, and then then they have the two of them. Everybody knows who they're voting for. You're a Democrat. You don't give a shit. If they have a warmonger with dementia, you're going to vote for that guy. If you're a Republican, you don't care if it's a reality show TV star that says, you know, not all neo-Nazis are bad people. There's good people on both sides. You don't give a fuck. Right. Because your money's red and the other people's money's blue. Well, you know what? My money is LSU, baby. And I think Joe Burrow learned something In that game when he got sacked nine times against the Titans, he stopped doing that Fran Tarkin and tucking the ball and starting to fucking, you know, try to do the whole uh, run into the blurriness down here, Paul. You don't want to be down here in the blurriness. You want to be in focus. So I feel like he was throwing the ball away. Um, I just, I just, I don't know. I just like the, uh, the Bengals, man. I think they're a team of destiny and they got that fucking field goal kicker who talks shit. Well, I guess we're going to the AFC championship game. Well, I guess we're going to the Super Bowl. Well, you know what, Paul? I guess we're going to Disney World, and I'm picking the Cincinnati Bengals for their first. And you're taking that with the spread. You're taking we're that with the four spread. at this point, right? I thought the last I saw was four and a half. What is it, Andrew? Four and a half, and Joe Burrow 
Dude, the Bengals are fucking so due. That's where the West Coast offense started with Bill Walsh before Paul Brown shipped them away. I'm telling you. All of those all of those 49ers Super Bowls should have been the Bengals. They've been waiting for fucking 50 years. I got to feel it's their time. All right, guys. There you go. Uh, Bill Burr, Super Bowl pick. He's taking the Cincinnati Bengals. Based all on emotion. And Joe Burrow. <laughs> all right. I'm going to say this, okay? Everything that I've seen in football and all the logic that I've seen in football tells me logically, even though logic is out the window with this, okay? Because if logic existed, Joe Burrow wouldn't be sacked nine times against the Tennessee Titans and still win. Joe Burrow wouldn't be losing 21 to three in Kansas City to Mahomes and still win. And we wouldn't be making money, earning a living, telling jokes. There's no logic in the world, Paul. There's no logic in the world. Um, Everything tells me that the Rams should win this game. Defense wins championships. The defensive front of the Rams is going against a weaker offensive line. I want Joe Burrow to win this game. I want to see this kid. I love this kid's swag. He's got a chain over a turtleneck. Who loves that more than me? Okay. He's walking in, his hair is gelled. He talks a little shit. When the when that woman interview was asking him questions, he was doing that. I'm cool, Joe Wink shit. I love the kid. I do think though, the magic runs out. I do not only think the Rams are gonna win this game, and I want to be wrong. If Joe Burrow is listening to this, I want nothing more than you to win this game. Stop hedging your bets. But you're you're sitting there, you're he, you're rooting for an unhappy ending. He is not protected well. He is not protected well. And I he was protected well in that Kansas City game, Paul. He was down 21 to 3, and he was he's getting sacked in that game a little bit too. A little bit. Paul, I, I think you're making a mistake here. I think you're but you watch the Titans game, and that's what Paul does. He sees one thing and he's like, no, that's what it is. Listen, I want to pick Cincinnati, but I think Cooper Cup is gonna have the catches he gets. I think that that's gonna leave OBJ to make some plays. And I just like the defensive line of the Rams. I think the Rams are going to win the game. I think the Rams are going to win the game. They're going to take Cooper Cup and that leaves, uh, they're going to double him. So that leaves uh, Odell open. I'm saying that he's going to, Stafford loves going to Cup so much and that's going to leave somebody, that's going to leave a vulnerable D back with uh, with Odell. That's what I I don't think think you're giving Cincinnati enough credit. Paul, you know something? I like My money's starting to fucking jump a little bit in my wallet. I I think it's coming your way, Paul. I think. What do you want? By the to go? way, you I owe you a hundred. Two hundred. I owe you a hundred because of the Packers. Remember, I said I'm just going to hand you a, a one if that happens. From so the most a, Italian bet, yeah, ever. Don't think when I don't. People see- who missed the episode. What was the bet you said? If, if I the just 40, said if he doesn't, if, if, if the if Green he, Bay Packers, this is what he said this. before the NFC Championship game. He goes, Bill. If the Green Bay Packers do not make it to the Super Bowl, the next time I see you, I'm taking a brand new $100 bill and I'm sticking it in your front shirt pocket. And I go, all right, well, what do I have to do? And he goes, nothing. That was out of all the years I've known you. That's the most Italian you've ever been. <laughs> that was like when Chaz Palminteri in the Bronx tale shook his hands over. It's over. Oh, he terrible tickets. Terrible tickets. He started oh. hugging everybody. Um, I oh, think, before the race, before, before the mush. No, before it even, before they even did the final turn, he goes, look, it's over. And he starts shaking hands, hugging everybody. Um, yeah, I'm taking the Rams to win the game. I think the Rams could, and I think if it's a blowout, it would be the Rams, not the other way around. I could be wrong, and I kind of hope I am, but I think the Rams are going to be. Oh, them. I think you're wrong, Paul. I got so 200 bucks says you're wrong. All right, so me and Bill, so Bill's got the Cincinnati. Bill's got Cincinnati. I'm taking Los Angeles, and we're going to do a friendly. Oh, I got bet. 200 bucks with you. That's what you I'm saying. And I. You and I must make a bet. <laughs> so, so. Me and Bill are going to also do a side bet of $200, uh, $200. I'm going to take the Rams at home. I'm excited for the Super Bowl. Okay, we going spread or we just going straight up? We betting the money line? What are we doing here? You and I. You think the Rams are going to win. See, that's the thing. You think they're going to win. I think the Bengals are going to win. You don't wait. Hey, you don't. Hey, Paul, this is how confident I am. Here's my fucking little Italian swag from hanging with you. I don't need the points. I'll bet you straight up. 
Okay, I'll bet you straight up too. Straight All up, right. now tell me, do you really want to bet with fucking freckles? <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, Top 40 song is in my fucking head. Um, all right, we'll go straight up 200 bones. 200 bucks, Paul. And if I lose, then I'm giving you 300. Because <laughs> I'm going to tell Aaron Rodgers. I have an option. If you don't want to give me the full 300, you can just give me 200, but you got to sing the LSU fight song. No, no, I want to give you the 100. And I want to tell Aaron Rodgers he owes me a fucking C note. That's what I want to do. That's what I want. That's how pissed I am. They used to be in that fucking game. And so should Buffalo. Um, all right, this is kind of cool for the show because you got Buffalo, Buffalo and Kansas City with those two fucking awful defenses ended up exactly where they should be watching the Super Bowl. Once, Dude, once the smoke cleared on that, Paul, that was the worst fucking defense I think I've ever seen in any game ever. That was a joke. If you're Josh Allen, what do you say to the higher ups? That's like a comedian trying to get to Montreal and just crushing on all fucking auditions, like standing ovations and then not getting it going. Like, should I like, what did Josh Allen need to do? No, it wasn't his fault. Here's the thing. And they had one of the top rated defense in the league. And when it came down to the big moment, they, they fucking choked. Yeah. They choked. Um, That's all you can say. Kansas city. All their defense did was play how they played all year. Ter- terrible. Are we, I can't have- say all year. We only have 15 minutes left here, so let's get into some of these prop bets, which are fucking, oh, dude, they got me going. Well, can you explain to me and the listeners, when it's like, when it says plus 550, does that mean I got to bet 550 to make 100? No. Or to make one, if it's 550 minus 160. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. So if something is plus 1,000, if you bet 100, you you, you, you get 1,000. So this is all best bet bet off. Uh, it's all based off betting a hundred dollars, right? So this prop bet says first touchdown scorer of the game. For example, so if I bet a hundred bucks and Cooper Cup gets a fucking touchdown, I get five hundred and fifty bucks on Cooper Cup. Yes, yep. Those sound like lineman odds. Why is Cooper Cup? Why do they think he's not going to get one? That's first touchdown. Because it's got to oh, be the first, first touchdown, touchdown of the game. Oh. Right. So Odell Beckham Jr. is plus a thousand to get the first touchdown of the game. You put a hundred on it, and he gets boom. You fucking you, you, ten times. So oh, that's yeah, that was that year that guy bet Jack Squirek on the fucking Raiders, and he picked off a fucking ball. Yeah, Some so the last guy nobody heard of intercepted a ball for a touchdown against the Redskins. Yeah, that's the last guy on this list is some guy Ben Schockrek. And if he gets the first touchdown of the game, it's plus 6,600. <laughs> but it's fun because you could put 20 on it. You could put 10 bucks on it and make money. Um, I'll tell you who I like for, I, I, I tell you who I like in that bet. First touchdown of the game. You Dude, know who Joe I like? Joe Burrows plus four grand. That's the, that's the one I was just going to say it. What if they get to the one yard line and he fucking jumps in there? You win $4,000 on a hundred. I'm doing that one. I'm doing that one. Um, that's 4K, dude. What um, does Bengal D slash ST mean? Defense? Uh, yeah, if the defense gets like a, you know, fumble, pickup, run, Special teams, ST, special, special teams. teams. So you're telling me the Bengals or the Rams fucking scoring a touchdown is, is half the odds of Joe Burrow doing it? He must never do it. No, he, I'm sorry, he's fourth. He's 4,000. Matthew Stafford is 6,600. Yeah, that's a good bet. If you put 20 bucks on that, if you put 20 bucks on that, you're making like a th- whatever. You're making money, dude. Like, I think you're I, losing 20 bucks, Paul. I think that's what you're really doing. But like, I know the pie in the sky. <laughs> not, dude, how many times you guys are Patriot fans? How many times is uh, Tom Brady on the one yard? Yeah, but line that was his move. And Tom was great at everything except running. And that's why he was great at everything because he couldn't run. <laughs> All right, let's go to su- let's go to Super Bowl. He could Bowl hit every NFL. pass. He could sneak. He could do everything but run. Yeah. Um, Super Bowl MVP odds. Obviously, Joe Burrow. Wait, so who are you picking, Paul? First scorer. Who do you like? First scorer, I like for that bet for the money. I like Joe Burrow for plus four thousand dollars. All right, I'm going to bring it to reality. I like Joe Mixon. I like a nice handoff, and it's like a fucking eight-yard run, too. 
one of those sweeps in there. You see all these Ram jerseys, and he just sort of fucking uh, serpentines through the whole thing. That's what I'm seeing. I mean, do you like a blowjob? Everybody sees that. Let's get fucking creative here. I like you know, making you're... money, Paul. <laughs> Dude, what do you like, I... Paul? Fucking meeting some big fake titted whore in a strip club and throwing fucking $100 on her that she's not going to cheat on you? But you're acting like a quarterback that's starting, can't get the first touchdown of the game for four grand. That's a good bet. You know, it's not like a. No, I just or... fucking played the videotape in my head and I saw Joe Mixon running in. Okay. All right. All right. Actually, I don't know that's why you had bad... to come to me all hostile like. No, that's not bad. Oh, God. I'm going to sneeze like that guy who broke his ribs. Um, Joe Mixon plus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, when you said he looked like he sh got shot out of a, or he got sucked out of a spaceship. Joe Mixon, that's a good bet. That's plus 750. So yeah, I want to win money, Paul. I mean, anybody can go like, hey, Joe Bag of Donuts plus fucking 10,000. I'm going to bet 20 bucks on that. I mean, yeah, I'll fucking throw money on it. But like, I'm trying to win, Paul. All right. All right. I like Not that. Death by a thousand twenty dollar bets. Oh, my God. I hope he bootlegs and scores. Oh, your phone's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, where are you watching the big one? Like, what are you doing? Paul, at this point, it could be my living room or I'm going to go to the game. I got a couple of buddies in town. They're trying to make some moves. I don't give a fuck either way. And then another buddy of mine goes, you know, I'll stub hub if you want to. I'm like, now? Dude, stub hub now. It's like the worst seat in the house is like 6K. Yeah, fuck that. Um, Six grand, Paul. You know how many fucking Air Jordans and track suits that'd be for you? <laughs> All right, let's go to Super Bowl MVP. Joe likes Mixon to score the first well, one. Well, if you spent six grand on, on Air Jordans and track suits, you'd have feds outside your car, outside your house, just watching. <laughs> yeah, it's stupid, too, spending that money. Um, this guy's got to be doing something. Look at him. Who do you like for the Super Bowl MVP? Obviously, both quarterbacks are the worst odds because it usually goes to them. So what are you going to bet, Paul? A lineman? I'm I'm trying to win money here, dude. Sony Michelle is plus eight thousand, but he, he, running backs usually have to have like two hundred and fifty yards and three touchdowns. That's not going to happen, Paul. This is the thing. This is the thing. You either bet these in reality, or you make right. like just like a bunch of fucking small bets, and everybody, right. oh, plus ten thousand. If I bet one dollar, I could finally get that above ground pool. I bet having my eye on. Or you can I, get into reality. All right. My reality for this one, the reality pick would be, I'm not going to go Stafford because that's too, too little, but Cooper cup is the second one on the list. And if that guy gets 11 catches for 160 yards and a touchdown or two, it could be him and he's plus 600. So I'll say Cooper cup for the Super Bowl MVP. Yeah, I don't like that bet. I feel like they only give that fucking, they only give it to a wide receiver if it's like fucking Lynn Swan or, or Jerry Rice. I like Joe Burrow. I'm going right out over the plate here, Paul. I'm trying to win money. All right. I think the Bengals are going to win, and they're going to give it to Cool Joe. And Joe Mixon's going to score the first touchdown, which is going to put the Rams on their heels. You see this, Paul? You see what I'm doing here? I'm, I'm, I'm painting a picture. All right, I like it. Okay? I see I like what you're it. doing, Paul. I'm You're on the ground with the 22 shooting at a fucking police helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, you might take it down. I mean, you might take it down. I don't know. I hope, I'm hoping to hit the rotor. <laughs> There's a reason it's illegal, Paul, because, you know, something could happen. Um. All right, Bill, this is one of your favorites here. The Gatorade bath color. But before I before we do this, I'm going to be a friend to you. I'm going to be a friend to you because somebody told me somebody it's said, yellow. Just, somebody said to me, all right, you're going yellow, but somebody said to me, they go, just so you know, the Bengals always have orange. And when he said that to me, I was like, I wish you didn't tell me that, but I'm not going to do this bet pick with bill and not tell him that, but you know what I'm going to do? Oh, do I'm you understand that I'm an incredible friend? This is the easiest fixed fucking bet ever. Wow. All it takes is one fucking guy on the staff who's tired of these guys throwing their fucking water bottles at him and he's got to pick them up and all the tape. And all he's got to do is put some fucking booberry fucking blue Gatorade in there. 
Uh, dude, and he's going to fucking retire. <laughs> Purple Indigo. Oh, that's a movie. That is. That is. Imagine that. That is an Artie Lang fucking. You star, Artie starring Artie Lang. <laughs> what are you going? And then what happens on? is they lose the Super Bowl, and then all the players blame him because he fucked with their mojo by having the wrong colored Gatorade, and that's when the cards start to fall. <laughs> and now we got a road movie. Artie's in a car. I'm watching that movie. I'm watching that movie too. Um. <laughs> Dude, purple is plus a thousand. Yellow is plus four fifty, and blue is plus three hundred. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with, um, you know what? I'm gonna go over the plate with this one. I'm gonna say blue. I'm gonna say blue over Sean McVay's head. I like yellow. All right, Bill's got yellow. I got blue. I like Joe Mixon. I like Joe Burrow. I'm going all Joes. Joe knows on this one, Paul. Joe knows Super Bowls. All right, uh, first scoring play. Rams rushing touchdown, Bengals rushing touchdown, Rams receiving, Bengals receiving, um, Rams defense special teams, Bengals defense special teams, field goals or safeties. Obviously, safeties are paying the big money. You stay away from that. Um, oh, you said you said you like Cincinnati rushing touchdown, right? Yeah. All right. I, I like surprisingly I like, knocking those front four backwards. I actually like Cincinnati rushing touchdown too. Cause I think it's going to be, I think, I think the Rams will play from behind and come back and win. So, all right. Um, I don't know, Paul, you know, you're saying one thing, but you're betting something else. A little crazy, Paul, but I like what you're doing. You're either going to, you're, you're either going to be a hundred percent on and you're going to come next week wearing the fucking schwami hat. Jersey number of first touchdown scored in coin toss. What does that mean? Jersey number. We first just picked- I mean, didn't we already do this by picking the player? All right, let's let's do coin toss. I got I always go tails. All right, I'm going heads. <laughs> okay. All right. Heads uh, it is. All right. Total yards. Take the fucking ball. Total you oh yes. Dude, th- me and you are going to be – this is one thing me and Bill are always in agreement on. Anybody that wants to know with our texts and our phone calls during a game, why don't you kick? Why don't you get the points? <laughs> we are on the same page with that. Take um, the fucking points. Take the fucking ball. Dude, that fucking – that stupid-ass fucking – Bill, the algorithm says if you go for it on fourth down. University of Cincinnati, you won the toss. What do you want to do? You want to keep the ball or do you want to give it to Alabama who has the Heisman Trophy winner at fucking quarterback? Oh, we'll give it to them and see what happens. I said algorithm like a dick. I meant analytics. Total yards made by field goals. That's a dumb bet. I don't like that bet. I'm skipping that. Total yards by field goals. Kind of. I like that bet. By the Bengals, I'm going to say they're going to have uh under under 155. I'm going to say they're going to have oh, it's either under 190 or under 3. I think that he kicks three field goals. They're all going to be in the 40s. I'm going to say under 55. 155. Under 155. All right. I'm not touching that one. No, no, no. You know what? I'm going to say under a buck 90. Under a buck 90 cuz I think, you know, one of the ones you know, the Rams defense is going to stop him. It's going to be like a 51-yarder, and he's just going to come out, and he's just going to hit it, Paul, like he was going out to go pick up the morning newspaper. <laughs> he's going to be like, right. well, it looks like I'm going to hit a 51-yarder, and he's going to walk out, and that's exactly what the fuck he's going to do. I love when he kicked the warm-up kick, and he goes, well, I guess we're going to the AFC Championship game. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right, total um, yards made of field goals. Okay, we, we didn't want to do any of that. Now we're on the last one, and I did this prop bet on another Bet MGM show. I said, I think Jamar Chase of Cincinnati is going to have a 50-yard-plus reception. I think he's going to catch a 25, 30-yard pass and run for a bigger one. And that one is not on this list for some reason, but uh, it's out there. So, oh, no, it, uh, over – Oh, longest, hold on. Longest reception. 
is uh, under 27 and a half yards. No, no, I like over that. So I'm going to go with I that. think NFL defenses stink now, and Cooper Cup uh, over 29 and a half. He'll have a 30-yard one. He'll catch one for like 17 and run another 13. I see that happening. Bill, what's your final score of the Super Bowl if you had to pick? Final score. Um, Gun to your fucking head. <laughs> I like 23-17. Okay. Bengals. I like 29-18 Rams. There you guys go. Look at this. Half hour show. One minute away. There you go. Guys, this has been the Bet MGM segment. Make sure you guys go to the app. You download the Bet MGM app. Use bonus code BURR, B-U-R-R. You put in $560. You get 11 fucking 20 to bet on the Super Bowl. Have a good time. It's unheard of. They're giving you half a G. They're giving you half a G. Go have fun. Enjoy the game. Be safe. Drink responsibly. Check Bill's Monday Morning Podcast. Check my Verzi effect. Go to my uh, website. I'm going to be in Syracuse coming up this month. Pittsburgh. All the dates are on my website. Go to a show. Uh, Andrew, who do you got in the Super Bowl? You're the producer. Final word from Andrew Themlis, the Greek freak from Miss Compound in Beverly Hills. Who you got? I got the Bengals by a TD. Oh, by what? By a TD. Oh. I think it's, it's going to be like you guys are ganging up yeah. on me. All right, there you have it. The Greek freak, man, a few words, taking Joey B up uh, a touchdown. All right, guys, enjoy the game. All right, there you have it. Those are our picks. Uh, Love it or leave it. Bet your own way or come our way, whatever you got to do. Everybody have fun. Bet responsibly. Do not end up on Real Sports with Brian Gumbel because you bet your whole house. Just bet what you can afford to lose. Have a good time. Have some dip. And uh, enjoy the music right now, picked out by uh, the great Andrew Themelis. And then afterwards, we'll have a bonus Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's the Monday morning podcast for Monday, February 10th, 2014. How's it going? How are you? Yes, I know. I realize the podcast is actually, air quote, on time this week. Okay, don't even start that shit. It's never late. All right. I always tape on Monday mornings. That's why I call it the Monday morning podcast. You fucking myopic cunts. All right. The only reason why you're getting it this early on Monday is because I'm taping it on Sunday. The only reason why I'm taping it on Sunday, which I shouldn't even be doing because it's a day of rest. All right. It's a day to sit back after a week of farming. Fill, give your fucking oxen some oats. Whatever you feed them. Hay. Is that what you feed them? I don't know what the fuck you feed them. All right. All I know is they don't, they're fucking jacked and they, they, you never see them fucking drinking a protein shake, do you? People who drink protein shakes, you know something? Years later, when you get the powder cancer, I don't want to hear about it. Okay? You're drinking a goddamn powdered shake. What are you on the fucking Jetsons? Sit down and have a pork chop like the rest of us. These fucking idiots. They are these goddamn workout people. First, you go out there and you dress like the Green Lantern. And then you take out your little fucking powder thing, your little thing, and you shake the thing up. And then you suck it down. Just have a fucking salad. You know, dude, you know how pissed off those people who were selling the twat of nature were at me? They were actually upset. So they won't be on my podcast anymore. <laughs> They were mad as they're selling that box full of lies. Yeah, you know, you get hungry in the afternoon. Yeah, gee, what, what do I do? You can have a fucking banana. You can have an apple. You're going to be fine. Watch the pounds melt off. I don't need you to come over with your tray of snacks. Cigars, cigarettes, cigars, cigarettes. Get the fuck out of here. Okay, and shame on you for going and ordering that shit, you lazy fucking tub of shit. I'm sorry. Now, I know you're not supposed to fat shame, but, uh, you know, it's time we start fucking... At some point, you got to tell them to, like, look, I, I know you can't see your bootstraps, but you still should try to reach down and find them and pull them up over your fucking meaty, fat, flabby shoulders. All right? 
You ate your way into this situation. You can eat, what, eat your way out. Just do everything that you were doing the opposite way. It's like playing a record backwards. Except now you're playing it the right way. You've been listening to it backwards. Rush it, shabbat, 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 Sunday, chocolate, Sunday, ship, shabbat. Right? You gotta have it going the other way. Oh, this has some broccoli and Brussels sprouts. Isn't that a nice song? <laughs> oh, fuck. I hate taping on Sundays. I'm not funny on fucking Sundays. There, I admit it. Just like God, I need a rest. I don't have time for this shit. I don't have time to be silly on a fucking Sunday. Okay, I, I worked all goddamn week. Do you know how many microphones I had to fucking take out of a mic stand this week? Do you understand how sore my wrist is? For fucking... Hey, how you guys doing? All right, all right. Keep it going for whoever the fuck was just on in front of me. All right, how's it going? Oh, look at this guy, huh? Look at this guy. He's got snaps on his shirt. Oh, the button's too hard for you? I'm the smartest guy ever. Fuck his job. Look at me. I'm amazing. I got to do that every fucking night. On Sunday, I give it a rest. I don't say funny things on Sundays. So you're probably asking yourself, well, Bill, then why don't you just do it on fucking Monday? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because um, my wife is actually sick. She's got a 24-hour uh, virus, which I did not think was contagious. I thought she, uh, I thought she had food poisoning is what, it was, what, I, what I thought it was. So I was laying next to her in bed. We're using the same fucking bathroom. So basically, I'm probably going to get sick in the next 24 hours. So... What I'm trying to do is get this podcast out before shit starts coming out of me on both ends, if you know what I mean. All right? I got the wife upstairs. I'm downstairs. I feel like, I feel like my wife got bit by a zombie, you know, and I have her upstairs chained to the Davenport there. And I'm just waiting to see if she's going to turn. All we need is Brad Pitt in here telling us what to do. We got ourselves a goddamn movie. Um, yeah, so that's why, uh, that's why this thing's actually out early. And, uh, and once again, fuck all you guys who are going to be like, oh, I hope she gets sick every week so it can be on time. And fuck it. I wish the twat of nature on anybody who says that. Um, all right. Sorry. That was mean. It was all mean. So anyways, um, this is the podcast for this week. Uh, has anybody been watching the Olympics? 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing. I actually, I really enjoy watching the Olympics. I like just watching the games. I don't like all the other horse shit. You know, all the journalists complaining that the water isn't running and all that type of shit. I mean, am I the only guy who watched all those Cold War movies coming up when I was growing up? You know what it's like over there. You got the haves and you got the have-nots. There's like 20 people who have some shit over there and everybody else is getting fucked. It's, it's unbelievably corrupt. You know what's going on over there. You know? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the fuck's going on over there. I just, I just want to watch the fucking games. You know? I get it. I get it. They don't, they don't treat gay people the way that they should. I mean, why, why would they? They, they? they don't even have running water over there. I'm surprised they're not clubbing women over the head and dragging them down the street by their fucking hair. Um... <laughs> Have you read some of the shit that they've said about gay people? I mean, it's like, is this from the, the 1800s? Some guy in the Russian government, he, this is what he said. Uh, he, told gay, he also told gay visitors to not touch the kids. Like he's confusing pedophiles with, with, with gay people. I'm fucking real. No wonder the water's not running over there. Now, listen, I don't want to take a bunch of pot shots at Russia. I don't want to do this because for some fucking reason, I actually like them. I miss them. They were fun. It's like when the Red Sox are good and the Yankees suck. It's no fun. And for like the last, I don't know, 20-something years, they've been a, they're, they're in a rut right now. They're like the Michigan Wolverine football program. Like, what the fuck happened when are you going to get good again? And it's starting to get to the point like, fuck, are they going to turn this around? So I don't know. I don't even know what to tell you. I, I, you know, I don't understand how you can have the technology to blow up the world 
and then you still not understand humanity at that point, right? Don't they get will and grace like translated over there? Can't they see that there's nothing to worry about? <laughs> Have you guys watched any of the uh, any of the games? I actually watched uh, I watched some of the the cross country skiing, and I don't know if I'm a and, and some of the speed skating. Like I watched the the snowboarding. I think it's fucking amazing, but after a while, it just looks like they're all doing the same trick, okay? And I don't need a bunch of shit from people in their teens and 20s with half your head shaved and the rest of it looking like a comb over. I get it. I'm old. I can't tell the difference between a backside fakie and a fucking Gumby Twizzler 360, whatever the fuck. You, I, don't, I don't know. I'm amazed. I don't know how they do it. But I can only watch like four runs uh, that, you know, uh, I, it just all looks the same. I, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. You fucking you go down the hill. You jump on the on, on the railing or the banister, whatever it is. You do a little grindy thing and then you land and then you come in and then you fucking do a little. Oh, whoop de doopy doo. You grab it. You grab so grabbing the board with the hands. That's a big move. This is me trying to explain it. And then I also learned that when you go to land, you're actually looking up the hill. You have your head looking up the hill. I'm, see, my, I would have looked down the hill. You're supposed to look up the hill. All right? I've learned that. And um, I don't know. Then you do a lot of high-fiving and hugging of other, um, other people that you're trying to beat for some reason. There's, there's a lot of camaraderie in that sport. Other than that, I don't know shit about it. But the speed skating I like and uh, cross-country skiing, go figure. I like that shit because it makes me want to go work out. Like I was watching the women doing it, and I'm like, they are burning so many calories, they don't even have titties anymore. Can you imagine? I could get rid of the giant titty that's right above my pubes if I started cross-country skiing. That's what I'm getting out of it. Dude, these women were flying. Okay, up the goddamn hill and then downhill. They actually they said this year they might actually hit speeds of 50 miles an hour. And they are so fucking exhausted by the end of it. You cross the finish line. They, they all of them collapse. And just fall in the snow like they were going to make a snow angel. And then they just passed out from too much booze or something. And then they're, they're laying on the fucking ground <gasps> doing that shit. And I'm just like, I don't know. There's something about it. You know what it is? I'm not fast. So I like endurance shit. You know, gymnastics and that type of shit, having to hang from some, doing iron cross. Like, I look at that stuff and I actually think, like, you know, if I tried to do that long enough, I could do it. I couldn't do it at an Olympic level, but I could do it. All right? I can watch a guy run a 440 all day long, dunk a basketball, I hit a fucking home run in a major league stadium. I'm never going to be able to do that shit. Did I just say I could do an iron cross? Maybe I'm already getting sick right now. Maybe I'm, uh, fuck you, I could do it. All I need is some rings and an old tree to hang them from. Oh, my God, can you imagine? What, 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 is, even, what is the muscle you tear trying to fucking do that? Is that your lats? I wonder how long that takes to build up the strength. All right, so all you would do, you'd fucking hang them from the tree. You know, once your wife is like, don't, don't hurt yourself. Once you get through that, you know, you people with kids, I'm just putting it up for the kids. Don't worry, I'll put some mats down and we'll put some leaves here. They'll be fine. I figure what you got to do, you hang, have the things hanging down and you got to get into the dip position first. And then what you do is you gradually start bringing it out. And then when you start feeling the fire under your armpits, you bring it back real quick. And just every day you go out there or every other day and you try to go a little bit farther. Is, is that how you do it? Anybody? Can anybody who listens to this podcast do an Iron Cross? Do I have to be wearing like those pants, like the feet pajama, grape smuggling fucking uh, lower pants, lower pants, lower leotard section of the pants there? Ah, fuck. Why do I try to do this on Sunday? This is why I don't go to church. It's just Sunday, so, you know, I don't fucking know. I'm always coming back from the road. I'm always traveling. You know, I fly back, and then I'm just, I just lay here catatonic. I'm, I, I, this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing here, trying to be fucking funny. 
anyways, I had a great show this weekend. I was actually out in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota at this casino. I believe it was called Treasure Island. I was there so fucking quick. I flew in. I did the show, and I came right back out. It was like minus two degrees the entire fucking time I was there. And that is a level of cold. You know, like, I love the winter. I don't give a shit until it gets down. Once it gets into the teens, that's when I give a fuck. That's when I'm like, all right, enough already. But I don't even mind if it's in the teens and Christmas is coming. It's when it's in the teens and it's just February or January. That's when it's fucking miserable. And it was so fucking cold out there. Even people from Minnesota were saying that it was like cold. But um, anyways, I went out there and uh, had a great time. Thank you to everybody who showed up. Um, still on the wagon. You know, it's funny after the show, um, I was hanging, uh, it was me and the other act that was out there. Jade Catapreda. Hope I said that right. Um, I've never known how to say the last name. I can't even fucking read who fucking killed it in front of me, by the way, had a great set. So afterwards we're hanging and we're hanging with the promoter and I'm sitting at the bar and I'm not drinking and I'm fucking drinking O'Doul's. And, like, how many O'Doul's are you literally going to have? So I, I get one O'Doul's, and I'm just sitting there like, all right, I'll sip on this fucking thing and smoke a goddamn cigar or whatever. And um, so people after the show are going, hey, can I get you a drink? Can I get you a drink? I'm like, I'm like, no, I really appreciate it. Thank you for coming out, but I'm not drinking. Sorry. You know, you know, whatever. Get Jade one if she wants one, or blah, blah, blah. So then people started buying me rounds. They were buying me O'Doul's. <laughs> So then I'm like, well, I got to drink it. Somebody gave it to me. So like an asshole, all the weight that I've been losing because I, I haven't boozed in like two weeks. Like now I'm just sitting here pounding O'Doul's, pounding, pounding O'Doul's. The dumbest fucking, like the emptiest of all empty calories, just sitting there slamming things. I got to tell you something for a non-alcohol beer. It, it ain't that fucking bad. And if you have to be at a bar, you know, it's, I don't know. I think I found it. I think I found... See, I never yawn on Monday mornings. I think I found... Um, I think I could go on a nice little run here. If I can just still have my cigars, I have to have some sort of vice. Um, will that be bad? If I go back upstairs, right? And my poor wife, who I, I, you know, thought she's, she's up there right now in Gatorade, saltine cracker, um, hell right now. Um, and she's cool, too. She's cool about it. She's cool with me being down here. You know, a lot of women would be like, why can't it comfort me? <laughs> you can at least sit in the chair near me. I can't believe this. <laughs> you know, and then you get sick and they're fucking, they don't give a shit, right? Um, anyways, I didn't tell you guys this. I, I actually bought off of eBay. I bought a fucking, I bought a drum kit. And, you know, the one thing that sucks about drums is you cannot play them in uh, unless you get it soundproofed in your fucking house. So I actually I got some drum cases. And I'm going to bring these fucking things over. I can't wait to play these goddamn things. I got an old Ludwig kit. Um, I know what you guys are saying. Send me a picture. I'm not sending you a picture. Just know that there it's an old Ludwig kit. I, in due time, I will. And due time. Let me get my drumming up to a certain fucking level. Because I, I know I've promised you guys that I was going to start doing drum covers. I gotta, I, I'll got fucking do one. I just got to get somebody to videotape these fucking things and, uh, and edit it and all that shit. I just don't know how to do that. And furthermore, I don't want to learn how to do it. I don't need another goddamn hobby. I just, I don't know. You know what it is? I, I have like computer phobia. That's basically what earlier when I was trashing everybody with the new phones and all that. Part of that was true. Like, I really think you should pay down your debt before you get another flat screen TV, before you get another fucking phone. I can, if I could just get anything, just get something through to the listeners on this goddamn podcast, other than to go after what you want in life as soon as you can, it would be, you know, to just pay down your credit card. Don't start a fucking life of death death life of debt before you even get married and start having kids and then come out of it you know 
40, 50 fucking years later when you're in your 60s or 70s. Um, I'm telling you, just live within your means and you will have the gift of free time. You'll actually get a good night's fucking sleep. Um, but anyways, yeah, so, but that, um, generally speaking, like I have, I have major, uh, I don't know. I learned a lot about myself in the last week. Like my wife finally convinced me that I have ADD. And I know a lot of you guys who listen to this shit are probably just laughing. Like, yeah, how the fuck didn't you know that? You know why? Cause I'm the one trapped in this fucking skull. Okay. I'm sure you guys have problems too. Don't fucking come at me like that. I'm trying to open up here. Um, I have the yellow windscreen on the mic this week. Okay. <laughs> trying to come from my hat here. I got a little sunshine on the mic here. Um, and I didn't think, I didn't think she was right. She was like, no, she goes, I went on a website and I looked up ADD and you have every fucking symptom. And I always just thought ADD was just a crutch. Like people, I'm sorry, I have ADD. I'm sorry, I have ADD. Oh, I, got, I have ADD. I saw people, ex- you know, oh, I drove into the back of your car. Sorry, I have ADD. Like it just seemed like this fucking excuse. It seems something like for just something that weak people said. So um, I was just like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm stupid. Um, and uh, I need to read more. That's basically how I looked at it, which still might be the case, but... Um, I finally understood what she was saying because she, she read some of the symptoms and then I was sitting on the couch and I was talking to her about the Patrice O'Neill benefit coming up and I was saying how happy I was that, you know, we're doing it two years in a row. We're helping out all the people that he loved. We're helping out people that, you know, you know, diabetes, stroke and that type of thing. We're giving some money to them. And I'm really talking about how psyched I am that everybody, you know, bought the tickets and Opie and Anthony helped out and all the comics. Like, I mean, I have more than enough comedians on the show this year. It's just that everybody loved Patrice and wanted to be on it. So I'm in the middle of this heartfelt conversation with my wife. And, in, and I'm sitting on one end of the couch. She's on the end. And I sit there and I kind of lean my head back and I look up at the ceiling. And I'm in the middle of talking about how much I love Patrice and how much I miss him. And I looked up and I went, oh, a spider. Look at that. Look, there's a spider up there. And I just started talking about the spider. And then I hear her. She starts laughing. And I look at her like, what? And it was one of those things. She didn't even have to say it. She just had this look in her eye like that shit we were talking about earlier. And she literally buried her face in the pillow and just started laughing at me. And I was like, and I actually, you know, typical guy thing. I had to try to defend myself. I'm like, no, I mean, there's a spider. How do you not address the spider? And then I really thought about it later, like the level of, of emotional shit that I was talking about. And then just one stupid fucking spider. Oh, look at the spider. Like I, and another thing that I, when I go to leave the fucking house, I don't know. Maybe I'm trying to help out other people who might have this fucking problem. All right. Is like, and she told me, she should go, well, you should go talk to somebody about it. It's like, I don't want to talk, fucking talk to somebody about it. They're going to give me a goddamn drug that they push through the FDA that's going to fuck up my liver and do something else to me, but I can really focus when the doctor tells me I have this new kind of fucking cancer. Whatever happened to just toughen it out? You know, you fucking Rogaine pussies, just go bald like me. (laughs) Um, Anyways. How many times do I say this? What the fuck was I talking about? Same goddamn thing. This is it. I, I have major fucking problems. So she wanted me to go talk to somebody about it. I'm like, I'm not fucking doing that. But uh, I've just really noticed, like, the amount of times, like, take something simple. I'll have, like, a grocery list or something. If I ever made a grocery list in my life, let's just say for shits and giggles I do. I, I'll have that. Or my – or uh, – my phone or something like that. I have my phone and I'm going to leave the house and I go, oh, fuck, where are my keys? I need my keys. So then I walk over and I go over and I pick up my keys. All right, see you later, honey. And I walk out of the house. I sit in the car. I turn on the fucking car and then I look around. Where's my phone? Where the fuck? I left in the fucking house. How did I do that? I had the phone. 
I knew I needed the phone. I needed the keys. And it's just like I walk up there and my brain is thinking about 90 other fucking things. Other, and, and, and somewhere in there is I need the keys. And I walk over to get the fucking keys, I guess with the same hand. And I set down the phone. It's like almost like, you know, like when, you, when you're blackout drunk. It's like technically you passed out, but somebody is still awake in your body walking around talking to people that you're later going to have to apologize for. It's kind of the sober version of that for those of you who aren't afflicted with this, whatever the hell I have. Maybe that's why I suck at reading. (laughs) I don't know what it is. Because I I really want to sit here and say that I'm not a dumb guy, but fucking everything. And I always talk about how much I sucked in high school. I remember one one time like we had to do a book report and I got this book. It was about this German shepherd in World War II that fought alongside this guy. It was a great fucking book. Um, and uh, I remember the first night I sat down to read it, and it took me like four hours. Couldn't have been four. It was like three hours to read 30 pages, two and a half hours to read 30 fucking pages. And the next day I went into school. I still remember the kid I said this to. I said, yeah, man, it took me fucking – I was reading the book for two and a half hours. And they were like, how many pages? And I was like, wow, how many pages into you? And I said, 30. And he just started laughing at me. And I said to him, he goes, I go, what? He goes, it took you two and a half hours to read 30 pages? And I was like, what? I, 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 and I said, I read to understand. <laughs> and he just started laughing at me. Thought that was the funny. He thought I was trying to be funny. And what I was really was trying to convey to him was I had to, I kept reading paragraphs and my brain would be thinking about other shit. And I had to go back and reread it over and over and over and over again. So I had to go that slowly so I could understand it. It was basically my naive way of, I guess, explaining. Look, all I'm saying is if I don't have ADD, I am surprisingly stupid, (laughs) but whatever. It's helped me in life. Maybe that's why I can't write a fucking script, but I can write bits because they're they're short, right? You know what I like about this ADD shit? I can explain away all my problems. This is phenomenal. Hey, Cleo. Cleo. Guess what? I have ADD. All right. Does that mean anything to you? She's looking at me right now. She was laying down. She just picked up her head. She was awake, by the way. It's one of those deals where she's got one ear down. And one ear up. You know, can you get any fucking, I challenge you right now to tell me something cuter in the animal kingdom than a fucking jacked animal that could rip your fucking face off that any time it decides to. Waking up from a, from a nap with one ear down and one ear up. Come here, Cleo. Come here, buddy. Come here. Oh, big stretch. Big stretch. Come here. Let me fix your ear. I'm not saying jump up on the bed. There you go. That's her saying hello. Sniffing the microphone. What's up, buddy? Even your head has muscles. Huh? This is what I do every day because even I don't know how to express love. This is what I do every day with Cleo. I grab her by both ears. Not hard. Oh, she's walking away. I grab her by both ears, and I just make her look up at me. And when she looks up at me, I just go, I fucking love you. (laughs) That's how it is. I love that dog so much. I want to fucking tackle it every time I see it. Isn't that right, Cleo? Huh? You're helping me live longer. Because I got to take you out every day. Fucking shit's like a horse. Um, anyways. Oh, you know what? We got to take a break for some advertising that I haven't even gotten yet. So I'm gonna have to drop these in. So through the magic of radio, not re- of editing, I should say. Hey, don't wipe your ass on the rug. She rarely does that. Still like the fucking thing. Anyways, just making sure she, there you go. Go over and lay down. Um, through the magic of editing, here's some, uh, here's some, here's the first group of advertising for this week. Okay, and now the advertising this week. Dropped into the podcast through the magic of editing. Sherry's Berries, everybody. 
Hey, how did you meet your significant other? Create another unforgettable moment with Sherry's Berries. You can talk about learning how to give the right gift, finally getting it right. Talk about how much they enjoyed the product. Oh, that isn't part of the copy? I I don't understand these fucking people. All right. Giant freshly dipped strawberries from Sherry's Berries starting at just $19.99 for a 40% savings or double the berries for just $10 more. You just need my code, BURR, B-U-R-R, when you order. I'm assuming it's BURR. It's blank there. Uh, Dipped in white milk and dark chocolatey goodness, topped with chocolate chips, decorative swizzle, or nuts. 40% off from Sherry's Berries. Enormous, romantic, fresh, juicy, mouth-watering berries right in your mouth. Here's the only way to get this amazing Valentine's Day gift. Giant, freshly dipped strawberries starting at just $19.99 or double the berries for just $10 more. Visit berries.com. That's B-E-R-R-I-E-S dot com. Click on the microphone in the top right-hand corner and type in Burr, B-U-R-R. Go to berries.com, click on the microphone and type in Burr, B-U-R-R. Hurry, offer ends on Thursday. Oh, shit. You know what I just realized? I'm supposed to read these before I read them. So their copy isn't wrong. My apologies to everybody at Sherry's Berries. All right, the classic. The one that everybody loves. Dollar Shave Club. For a couple of bucks a month, dollarshaveclub.com delivers amazing quality razors right to your front door. Not only does it save you a ton of cash, it it saves you from trudging to the drugstore for a pack of blades. I always get stuck behind the family of four trying to buy ice cream and develop their photos from the disposable camera. Um, But now I don't have to do that anymore because Dollar Shave Club, for just a couple of bucks a month, amazing quality razor blades are delivered right to your door. That's right. No more wasting time and no more getting hit up for 20 bucks every time you go to buy razors. Everybody here, meaning me, is getting their Dollar Shave Club blades, and you should too. And here's a genius idea. Try replacing your old shaving cream with Dr. Cabby's Easy Shave Butter. From dollarshaveclub.com. Trust me, your face will thank you later. Don't waste time at the drugstore behind the lady paying in pennies. Go to dollarshaveclub.com forward slash burr or go to billburr.com and click on the Dollar Shave Club banner. Keep your stress level low and your bank account balance high. Shave time and shave money. Go to dollarshaveclub.com forward slash burr. There you go. Look at that. I think that was damn near a perfect read. All right, another one for Valentine's Day, everybody. Pro Flowers. Pro Flowers. You already got her chocolate-covered strawberries from Sherry's Berries. You got your face clean-shaven from Dollar Shave Club. What is there left to do? Simple. You got to get her some flowers. Valentine's Day stories about uh, mistranslations, etc. Valentine's Day is this week. When she says she doesn't need flowers, she means you better get me flowers. Okay, get you know, what a pain in the ass it is to go down to the damn flower store with every other loser guy standing there trying to get the last bit of, you know, the flowers are half dead. All right. By the way, when, when the, the more the flower is open, the closer it is to death. I actually learned that from the late, great Patrice O'Neill, who, believe it or not, used to sell flowers at some point in his life. He told me that. and I never forgot it. Anyways. They got the fresh flowers here, pro flowers. Get one dozen long stem assorted roses with a premium vase and gourmet chocolates for $29.99 or double the roses. That's two dozen roses, long stems, and the premium vase and chocolates for just $9.99 more. And you won't find a deal this good anywhere else this week. So for 40 bucks, you get all that. Okay, pro flowers is quick and easy and delivers on Valentine's Day. Deliveries on Valentine's Day is guaranteed. Even if you already have Valentine's Day plans, you need flowers. You got to get them. You put the cherry on top, and this is so perfect for guys. It's so perfect. All you got to do is just order it. You don't even have to get away from your desk. You can literally be watching the game in between periods. You can order. How do you do it? Here's the only way to get the Valentine's Day deal. One dozen long stem assorted roses with a premium vase and chocolates for twenty nine ninety nine, or double the roses for just nine ninety nine more. Go to proflowers.com, click on the blue microphone at the top of the uh, top right hand corner and type in Burr, B-U-R-R. 
That's proflowers.com. Click on the microphone and type in Burr, B-U-R-R. Order today. This deal is only around while supplies last, and Valentine's Day is this Friday. Okay. Stamps.com, everybody. Oh, Jesus. Stamps.com, everybody. You've probably heard the cost of stamps just went up to 49 cents, but not if you have stamps.com. With stamps.com, you pay less for postage. Uh, you, you'll pay less for postage than you would at the post office. For first-class mail, priority and priority express mail packages and more, stamps.com is easy to use and convenient. Buy and print discounted stamps, shipping labels, and more using your own computer and printer. Not only will you save money with stamps.com by not paying full price postage, you'll save valuable time too. Stamps.com always keeps the rates up to date so you'll, ne- so you'll get the exact postage you need every time right from your desk. Never go to the post office again. I use Stamps.com to send out all my posters and my DVDs. I've never had a problem. Right now, use my last name, Burr, B-U-R-R, for this special offer, no risk trial, plus a $110 bonus offer that includes a digital scale and up to 55 bucks free postage. You can't miss with this one. Don't wait. Go to Stamps.com before you do anything else. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Burr, B-U-R-R. That's Stamps.com. Enter Burr. Free scale, $55 postage, $110 offer. That's what it's worth. What am I trying to say? You don't ever have to go to the post office again. Don't be an idiot. Stamps.com. All right. Legal Zoom, everyone. Some things like starting a business or protecting your family with the will aren't like your other New Year's resolutions. You can't afford to blow this one off, all right? Instead of less snacking and more exercise, put put this at the top of your list. LegalZoom helps you incorporate or form an LLC with their simple questionnaire starting at just 99 bucks. Over 1 million entrepreneurs have already done it, and 90% of our customer, customers recommend LegalZoom to friends and family. You can also create a will starting at just 69 bucks or even a living trust. Quickly and easily and get peace of mind and protection. No surprise fees, no hassles, man, and no headaches. LegalZoom's step-by-step process was created by a team of legal experts in law and technology. LegalZoom is not a law firm but can connect you with the third-party attorney and provide you with the self-help services. From wills to business, sorry, from wills to business formations, trademark, powers of attorneys, and more, go to LegalZoom.com for even more savings. Type in Burr, B-U-R-R into the referral box at checkout. Don't put off the things you need to do. Go to LegalZoom.com now and use discount. Use the discount code BURR, B-U-R-R. That's LegalZoom.com, discount code BURR. All right, and last but certainly not least, e-voice, everyone. All right, you're a business owner, but automated phone system and secretaries are not in your budget. They're not in your budget just yet, and juggling incoming calls yourself, it, it doesn't make you look like a professional. All right? You want to make money here. You want to look like a pro. Here's, what you can, here's something you can do that will dramatically help you make more money in 2014. It's called eVoice, everyone. Whether you're a business of one or 100, eVoice will help you manage all of your incoming calls. With a toll-free number, dial-by-name directory, and call routing tools, your business will sound like a million bucks. Can't take a call? No problem. eVoice will transcribe the voicemail and email it to you. Uh, never get caught off guard again. And with eVoice, you can try it before you buy it. Right now, just for my listeners, you can get a 60-day free trial to eVoice. Go to eVoice.com and enter the promo code BILL, B-I-L-L, at checkout. Take charge of your business and make more money in 2014. Go to eVoice.com and enter BILL at the checkout for your 60-day free trial. That's eVoice.com, promo code BILL. And that is the advertising. And with the magic of editing, we are now returning to the Monday Morning Podcast. Okay, and we're back. Huh? How about those reads? Were those things awesome or what? I have no idea. I hope they went well. Uh, oh, you know, the one that I always forget to bring up is uh, Amazon.com, everyone. If you shop through Amazon.com like I do, if you'd like to donate to this podcast, here's a wonderful thing you can do. Just go to BillBird.com, click on the podcast page. You look over on the right, there's the Amazon.com uh, banner. You click on that, takes you right to Amazon. And I know it's an extra step, but um, if I drive tra- traffic to their site, they give me a kickback on whatever you guys buy. It doesn't cost you any, any more money. It just takes a little bit of your uh, little bit of life out of your index finger with a couple extra clicks. That's all. That's all it is. If you'd like to do it, do it. If you don't, I understand. You're busy. You got shit to do. 
Um, all right, let's move on here. Hey, how fucking weird and awful is right after the Super Bowl, that first Sunday without football? I, I don't know about you guys, but it, it's always so goddamn jarring. Um, because you're so watching the playoffs and you're so getting into it and you're so trying to guess who's going to win the Super Bowl and fucking get, get your bets going and all of that shit that you don't even contemplate that the second that game's over, football is now done. Done until September. Fuck that bullshit in August. All right? It's done until September. What in God's name are we going to do now? I'd say turn on the fucking hockey, but it's the Olympics. So, oh, actually, you can actually watch women's hockey because the men's hockey doesn't start for a minute. Please, everybody, do me a favor. Watch some of that Olympic hockey. Sit down and enjoy it. It's going to be phenomenal. And when you do enjoy it, don't say that dumb shit like, like everybody says. I actually tweeted about this. You know, every four years during the Winter Olympics, people who don't watch hockey – get to lie and say that if NHL, if the NHL was like Olympic hockey, that they would actually watch Olympic hockey. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. You're either a basketball person or a hockey person. There's very few people who have the time to watch both. All right? Another thing that always happens during the Olympics is when people praise the Olympic game, um, they start talking about the NHL like it's still 1975. I heard... Uh, Mike Wilbon, who I love, and one of the few shows that I actually like, PTI on uh, ESPN. He even hinted like that. He goes, it's great. I love the Olympic hockey. You know, if the, NH he goes, you know, if the NHL would get the fighting and all the stick work, all this – what, what does that mean, all this stick work? What the fuck – what does that mean, that guys are just clubbing each other the fucking head? You know why they say that? Because once every four or five years goes by, somebody does that shit. Actually clubs somebody in the face with a goddamn stick. And then that's the thing that gets on Sports Center. And then all these people who don't watch hockey at all or, or, or watch it in passing then start going like, See, this is the kind of thing. They need to get this out of the game. And, and they always go in the fighting. Dude. There's, I've been saying this for years. I said this in 2010 during the Olympics. There's barely any fighting left in NHL hockey compared to the way it used to be. Okay? Back in the day, you used to have like at least two, if not three guys on every team who were on your team to beat the shit out of the other two to three guys that were on that team to try to beat the shit out of your guys. Like when I was growing up, when I first started watching the Bruins, they had John Wensick and Stan Jonathan, and one of our all-star players, the heart of the team was Terry O'Reilly. And he fought just as much as he scored. Back then, it was, he was known as a complete player. He could do whatever he wanted to do. You want the puck in the net? I don't know how good he was at defense, but whatever. He gave it his all. You want to drop the gloves? He could fucking do everything. Wayne Cashman was another guy. I mean, he was like a goal scorer, that guy, and he... he I just remember Fred Cusick. Oh, Cashman with the left. He had this left hook. Um, and then I caught the tail end of those guys. And then it was Jay Miller, Lyndon Byers. Along the way, we'd pick up guys like Willie Plett. And then the Islanders. The Islanders had all these guys. Great Hall of Fame tough guys. Chris Nyland, John Cordick. Everybody. And they, they were on the same fucking team. Okay, now, like, I don't even know how many, like, actual goons, straight up fucking fighters, I, I'm not going to say goons, are, are, are still in the goddamn league. Like, right now, the, the Bruins have one, Sean Thornton, and he can actually play the game. I know a lot of you guys are going to say, what, what, what about what he did against the Penguins? That's going to happen, okay? Especially when you give somebody a couple of love taps and they, they actually somehow get knocked out. I don't want to be a dick, but I think I could have taken those punches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here come the emails from the Penguin fans. Um, and I know what, uh, what they're going to be saying is they're actually going to say, well, why is there fighting? Why is there fighting in hockey? 
which is the dumbest fucking question ever. It's like you're going to address that and say, well, why is there fighting, period? Why is there fighting in boxing? Why is there fighting in the UFC? Why is that okay? But if every once in a while it happens in hockey, it's the most just, you know, deplorable fucking thing that ever happened. And now you got to make comments on society and the direction that it's going in. Dude, the Bruins played the fucking Canadians a couple weeks ago, and I'm, I'm pretty sure there wasn't even a fight in it. Those things, by halfway through the first period, once a year they'd have that game. Halfway through the first period, there would be like nine guys in the penalty box. And, and like fucking, I don't even know if that's even possible. They, 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 there would be standing room only in the fucking penalty box. And now they'll play each other, and they just play the fucking game. Without having any fights. But the fights are part of the goddamn game. And so I understand if you don't like hockey because of the fighting. But for the love of God, please quit complaining about it. Because they're ruining the game. Because they're going to take fighting out of it. And you're not going to watch it. You're not going to watch it. You're going to watch it the way I watch curling. I watch it once every four years. And I really enjoy it. And I think like, wow. I could actually watch this sport like I'm really going to go out and get the curling package and start watching it religiously every fucking year. I'm not going to do it. All right. So for the love of God, please enjoy the Olympic hockey and watch it. But keep your fucking uninformed comments about the NHL to yourself because it's an unbelievable game. It's a great league. And one of the reasons why it is so great is because not as many people watch it as the other three fucking leagues. You know. I just love that people fucking still bitch about hockey. And like the fucking NBA had a mobbed up ref, literally shoeless Joe Jackson kind of shit. And they just gloss it over. I mean, it was a story, but it was like, well, we had one bad apple, one bad apple. The fucking guy prevented the Sacramento Kings from going to the finals. The Lakers got another ring or an opportunity. I'm not taking away the fact that they won in the finals. But this fucking guy admitted that he fixed the goddamn series. So that they, they, have, they have a championship just like when, when the White Sox threw the World Series. You have the same thing going on except it was done by someone on, on an officiating crew. And I've, you hear more shit about the fighting in hockey than you heard about that. It's unfucking believable I actually got a friend of mine who will remain nameless. And he claims this. I don't know why he would lie. He was working for, uh, oh, this is tough. I got to watch out. I'm going to get sued. He was, wa- he was working for a basketball team that I'm not particularly fond of, <laughs> that I may or may not have made fun of on numerous times and may have already made fun of them on this podcast about championship claims, but I'm not going to say who they are. Their away uniforms remind me of Barney the Dinosaur. All right. That's for anybody who doesn't watch sports who can't figure it out. All right. They worked at the arena. And there was one game left. And this team was playing another team that was up north where it rains a lot. But they didn't lose their basketball team. And there was one game left in the series. And the guy who just stepped down told the people for the Barney the Dinosaur team to fucking order all the craft service or something like that, to fucking get the seats set up for the media and all that. But he only said it for the Barney the Dinosaur team, not for the rained out fucking team. And the Barney the Dinosaur team, like before the game even happened, he was claiming that there's no fuck, because he, he knew somebody who was in the, uh, the fucking... Uh, the other team's front office, and they were not given instructions to get prepared for the next playoff series. So it wasn't like we need to be prepared just in case. He only told one team to fucking do it, and it ended up being the team that won. Now, I know that that sounds fucking crazy. I'm not saying it's true. I'm not saying it's not true. But all I know is for fucking years, I was saying the NBA's fixed, and then I'm vindicated when they have a fucking mobbed-up ref, and it's like a fucking goddamn, like, it was maybe a 10-day story. It was really hard for a couple of days, and then that was it. It just went away. Ah, we just had one, one fucking guy. One mobbed up ref. <laughs> fucking a team out of a championship, a chance to win a championship. That's all. But the fighting. Oh, and, and the stick work. 
the, the, the tomfoolery. It just has to stop. You don't even have to watch hockey at this point to criticize it. So many people have criticized the fucking thing. You can just say what they say. All right, I'm done. I'm done. I got my fucking, I got my panties in a bunch here. Um, all right, let's, let's, let's read some, uh, let's read some of the, 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 the shit here for the week. Some of the, uh, the, the uh, what do you call these things here? See, this is another thing too. Oh, it's my ADD. I can't remember things because I have ADD. <laughs> Why'd you take your dick out in public, Bill? Ah, I'm sorry, I got ADD. Um, all right. Yo, Billy D. Williams. My chick is a diehard Niner fan, and after five years dating her, I've gotten into my I've gotten into football myself. Others consider me a conspiracy theorist. Oh Jesus! Now we're going right into conspiracy here. Right after nine eleven, I called it that the Patriots would win to symbolize the Phoenix style rebirth of American patriotism. Sure enough, the Patriots won. All right, I'm going to go with you on that one, dude. I called it. All right. He said, this year I made another prediction that I was really hoping would be wrong. I had a feeling that Seattle, the team icon which remem- resembles the um, America's bald eagle, will beat Denver's horse team, which represents China's year of the horse. This to symbolize the West's domination over the East. To further support my previously stated theory, they were there were a ton of pro-soldier and patriotic commercials. I'm very curious to see what political events are to come in 2014. Thoughts? Yeah, dude, you're, you're way too far down the fucking rabbit hole. I've never understood that thing like, like the symbols on TV thing. That's always, to me, seemed like paranoid thought. Um, and fuck everybody right now who thinks my NBA shit is, is paranoia. They had a mobbed up ref. Go fuck yourself. Um, it was fixed. I'm not saying straight across the, the board, but it was fixed on a certain fucking level. This shit here, like, first of all, all right, Seattle's team, which resembles an American bald eagle, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't. We'll beat the horse. I got to tell you, I didn't know it was the year of the horse, and I think I pretty much represent the average Joe. And, uh, a seagull does a, a seagull does not look like what's on the side of a, of, of the Seahawks. Not seagull, a fucking Seahawk. I'm an asshole. I didn't even realize I was saying that. A Seahawk does not look like a fucking uh, a bald eagle. It doesn't. A real one doesn't. The one that they showed looks nothing like the cartoon version that they have on the side of their fucking head. And even if it does, okay, the average shithead. The way you have to spell stuff out. I mean, the average shithead is ordering uh, the twat from nature there and having a box of fucking chocolate-covered peanuts delivered to their desk. They're going to stick those in their mouth and then wonder why they don't have abs. Do you think they're going to be able to figure out the American bald eagle and the Denver horse? I'm a Patriots fan. All right? Like, I I don't think... I, I just never made the connection. I, th- I think you're you're looking. So you're saying the Illuminati is also running a football league? <laughs> now what if the Falcons won? What would that what what would that have meant? The Green Bay Packers. What what you know? Do all of them symbolize something? Like every year, somebody who won last year? Who the fuck won last year? I don't even remember. I'm usually good about that shit. Two years ago, the Giants won. I remember that because they beat my fucking Patriots. What does that mean? That Giants are for the Taliban? Yeah, dude, I, I think that you're... Um, like if the 49ers win it, that means like we're coming back to slave labor. You load 16 tons, and what do you get? Big John. Big John. Big bad John. Um, yeah, dude, I, I think that... Uh, I think you're 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 kind of going beautiful mind there. You're reading the daily paper. And you're trying to to see stuff that isn't there. Um, yeah, to symbolize what 
the West domination over the East. I got to be I got to be honest with you. I don't understand. You know, as far as I'm concerned, China is West of where I'm at. <laughs> so how are they in the East? I mean, when I fly to China, if I ever go to China, I'm going to go West. They're going to fly me up to Alaska, make a left, and then go right by fucking South Korea. Hopefully you don't get shot down as we go by Russia. And then I'm in China. I'm not going to go east. How did they decide that? Is that because that's where we were populated? Like if everybody came from Africa, like Nas and all the rappers say, you know, because they've done their research in between blunts. Um <laughs> Um, if we actually all came from there, then why doesn't the day start right there? Because I, I understand we, we're living on this here, that the world is round. Who's to say where the day starts? Why does it start in Japan? All right. Sorry. There you go. It was a nice little fucking minute and a half to make you feel better about yourself intellectually. Moving on. All right. Championships in Seattle. Billy Bullface. Uh, I'm not sure if you heard about this, but Seattle has a few championships in women's basketball. Um, obviously, no one gives a fuck, but this is what's great. Well, I imagine the women who play on the team give a shit. And those 37 people who are related to them in the crowd, I'm sure they do. Oh, fuck, that's too close to a Joe Bartnick joke. Um, I imagine they give a shit. Let's see. He says, there's a great picture going on around a, around of a headline. Seattle's first championship from a Seattle newspaper. Below the headline is a picture of a player from the Seattle's women's basketball team as she's looking up at a bunch of banners for championships that they've won. Well, don't they mean like the Seahawks' first championship? Because even if they are sexist, wouldn't they realize that the Supersonics won a championship? Do you, wait a minute. Do you, not, do, you, do you like not count that one now because... The Sonics moved to uh, to Oklahoma City and became the Thunder. I don't understand that. Like, you know, it was cool this weekend. I saw somebody in the crowd at a Minneapolis Lakers T-shirt. I thought it was great. And I was telling him, I go, those five championships, I, you know, as far as fans go, you guys claim those. The franchise, you know, has the trophies. But the fans, those are your championships, Right? Has to be. Has to fucking be. If if the Lakers move to fucking Las Vegas and won again next next year, what would what would Los Angeles fans do if they started going, Yeah, we got seventeen, bitch? You'd be like, Well, wait a minute, no, sixteen of those won in LA. And then Minneapolis fans would be like, No, five of those. Eleven championships won in LA, five were won in Minneapolis, one of them was in the fucking BAA. Oh, Jesus, Bill. Let it go. Ah, go fuck yourself. I like I like being a cunt. Um So yeah, I mean women's championships don't count as much because of women. It's their fault. It's their fault. Because guys don't sit around watching the WNBA. We keep supporting the NBA. What women need to do is say fuck the NBA. And just start watching the WNBA. And what they should be doing is they should be selling out those arenas. Cheering on the women there. That's who needs to do it. Right? Then they should all get together with all their alimony money. And they should buy out the men that started the WNBA. And they should run it themselves. And then no longer do you need the NFL to be wearing pink in October. You could fucking be wearing it all year in your league. Jesus Christ. I don't know if I just solved some problems or uh, offended everybody from cancer survivors to uh, people with the veg over there. Um, I don't give a fuck. Whatever. Take, take, take the podcast seriously. That's, that's been happening lately. A couple of Native Americans get, sent me some angry tweets. Remember a few weeks ago when I was making fun of white ignorance? When I said that uh, Hawaii was not part of the United States because no white people look right out in Hawaii? but you look fine on the mainland, like look leaning up against an oak tree. I look fine. And I'm like, and I'm so sick of Native Americans. I'm so sick of arguing with Apaches. I literally said that. Like, like that wasn't enough. That wasn't absurd enough for someone to get the joke. Uh, people were, were like doing that. You know that Jim Norton character, little uh, literal Jim? 
they, they, were, they were doing that. Like, well, the reason why you look normal is because you fucking killed all of us. Like, I don't know that. Like, I'm somehow for that. I don't know. Anyways. But whatever. Continue to take it seriously. I had actually somebody wrote me last week. I said, they, I said fighting like a pit bull. And somebody wrote, this woman wrote, fighting like a pit bull? Really? You fucked hard? And she went on and on and on and on and on. And I wanted to write back, well, like, okay, I rescued a pit bull. Pit bulls were bred to fight. I'm not saying it's right. Okay? And lastly, fucked hard is a play on retard. So it's okay to make fun of uh, people who are mentally challenged, but not dogs. You twisted cunt. But I don't. I don't write that back because you know what? You, they don't on Twitter. They don't give you enough letters. Uh, all right, the art of baking, dear Billiam. Dear Billiam, um, as of late, I've been baking. S- I never know how to say this. Scones, sconces are the things that are on the walls, and the only reason why I know that is because I had to say that one time in an audition. Scones. He said, "All right, I'm just say scones. I don't give a fuck." As of lately, I've been baking scones. And he writes in, oh, Jesus, are they good? I got the idea from you and your lovely pumpkin pumpkin loaves. Uh, You sound so pumped talking about your baking, and it made me want to try it. It certainly adds another dimension uh, to my game with the ladies. Oh, absolutely, dude. Let me tell you something, one thing. One thing about women, all right, other than the fact that they do not support other women playing basketball. At least they don't do it enough. The other thing about women is they like fucking sweets. Okay? They love a guy that can cook. If you can actually fucking make something sugary, it's great on two levels. One, it makes you seem like you're going to be a good husband and father. Even if you're not, it just makes it seem that way. And they're more apt to bang you. Don't ask me why. I don't pretend to understand them. Okay? And then secondly, if you actually marry that woman, when she starts getting all fucking crampy, you know, and getting all bitchy when she gets the cramp toast over there, what you can do is just whip up a little pumpkin bread, a little sugar, okay? You go, here you go, honey. You fucking mush it in her face, and then, you know, she's not as uh, irritable. It's an understandable irritability. Don't get me wrong, but believe me. I know there's a lot of female comics who say, oh, if you started bleeding from your dick once a month, you'd be complaining too. Yeah. And if I did and you didn't, you'd be bitching about my mood. So go fuck yourself. All right. Um, so anyways, he says, uh, nothing twinkle toes about baking to impress a girl. Yeah, it is. It's still very effeminate. Baking is effeminate. I don't care how you look at it. There's nothing wrong with it. You're getting in touch with your feminine side. I'm so proud of you. Here's another thing you can do. Somebody sent me an email about this too. You want to you wanna really start slaying it. If you have no fucking game. And you need to do something to make your franchise look a little more attractive. So maybe you can make one or two big signings during this off season. All right? Learn how to bake. And by all means, take a fu- start taking yoga classes. Yoga classes are 98% women. All right? And I don't know what it is. Most of them are fucking hot. Now, a lot of you, granted, I've taken yoga classes in New York City and Los Angeles. So there, there's that. So knock that down. By about 30%. Um, and also a lot of them are career driven. So there's not a lot of moms in there. There's a lot of single women in there. Very limber. Fucked in the head women. You know what? Fuck that. Scratch all that. Learn how to bake no matter where you are. But take yoga in like Miami. Take yoga classes where there's going to be a lot of hot women. There you go. There's my stupid advice for the week. Anyways, let's let's continue here. He said, the ladies get turned on by a guy who can cook slash bake because, A, it exemplifies our capability to follow instructions, parentheses, recipe, and, B, they can tell by the texture that you're good with your hands, kneading. What, are you going to knead her titties? <laughs> Just fucking grabbing her ass cheeks, you know? Semolina. Um, anyways, he says, thanks for letting us in on that little secret. Hey, dude, it's all you, buddy. You fucking took it and you ran with it. Um, yeah, that's all that shit. I'm telling you right now, if you fucking, if you want to upgrade the level of ass in your life and you, you just look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, no matter what I do, when I look at myself, you know, I'm like, I'm like a six, a five. If you, I'm telling you, if you learn how to fucking bake. 
okay? Just shit. You know what? You, you learn how to make shit that they like to eat. What's that? What's those? It looks like lasagna. It looks like a pie, but it has eggs in it. Quiche. Is that what it's called? I can never fucking remember. The only way I remember what that's called is I remember the actor Stacy Keach. So that's the nickname for that shit whenever I see it with Nia. Like we'll come walking in and I'll look at the breakfast options and then whenever I see it, I just go, Stacy! And she laughs for whatever fucking reason because she gets my sense of humor. So you've learned how to do that. Here's another one. All right. Learn how to make red velvet pancakes. I swear to God. I'm not saying every woman likes this, but you just increased... By 2%, your chances of someday banging a model if you know how to make red velvet pancakes, okay? Some tall woman will come into your life. I'm guaranteeing it right now. You got a 2% chance more. She'll come into your life. She will eat those red velvet pancakes, okay? She will quickly go to the bathroom. She will puke them up and then jump on your dick, and you're not even going to give a fuck, okay? Because she's hot, you know? Sorry. Um, <laughs> that was disgusting. On so many levels. Anyways, he says, I'm looking forward to seeing you in Ottawa. Hopefully you get a chance to skate on the canal. Um, Jesus Christ. If that doesn't sound like the most effeminate thing ever, I'll fucking do that in a second. He said, you're always welcome to come play hockey with us after the show. Get the fuck out of here. Where? I want to play. I got two shows there, I think. Dude, fuck that. If there's a game after the show in Ottawa, I want in. Don't fuck me. Because I'm, I'm going to check my hockey shit. Are you going to be mad at me if I play? I have to play pond hockey with all my hockey gear on because I'm in the middle of a tour. I can't crack my skull, my knee, or my elbow there. Um, dude, come on. Let's do it. Invite me. Can I come over to your house? I feel like the kid with no friends. Oh, dude, that will be a great fucking YouTube video. All you Canadian guys out there with like no hats on, and street clothes, skating all around me as I'm out there looking like RoboCop. Let's fucking do it. Verzi not knowing how to skate, sitting there with a stogie, standing on a frozen pond. I'm all over it. All right, here we go. Here's one from um, about one of my favorite comedians of all time, Doug Stanhope. He said, Bill, heard you got, you got a shout out on Doug Stanhope's podcast. Yeah, what a great guy. I'll tell you that, Doug Stanhope. You know what? Biggest heart in the fucking business. He's just a great fucking guy. You know what I love about Stanhope? He's one of the best comics of all fucking time, and he's still a fan of stand-up. Like, actually, we'll sit there and enjoy watching your set. It's a fucking thrill. Anytime that guy, he's giving me way too many compliments. Uh, top shelf. That's the Johnny Blue of compliments right there, getting that from Stanhope. Um, he says, anytime I hear people talk about your podcast, they say it's cool that you do it by yourself and you can somehow keep it funny. Love that you don't have guests, except it'd be cool if you have Stan Hope on sometime. Yes, I know. We have to make that happen. I promise you that will happen. In fact, I will text him at the end of this podcast unless I forget. And if I forget, it's not my fault because I have ADD. <laughs> oh, man. You know what? I got to use that on my wife. That'll be the funniest fucking shit ever. I'm just going to start using that as an excuse. And you know what? She's going to laugh because she has a great sense of humor. But... I'm going to do it until maybe five days after it's become already become annoying just because those last five days will be fun for me and I'm selfish. All right, Vermont. This one's talking about Vermont. Bill, I see you're coming to Vermont. Fucking finally. No one ever comes up here. Yeah, well, what? why would you think that is? How about the fact you don't have a comedy club unless it's part of a – it's like a function room in a hotel. The only time I ever performed in Vermont, I performed in a comedy zone in uh, Burlington a long, long time ago. Like literally, was it eight? Yeah, coming up on like 18 years ago. Like 18 years. Holy fuck am I old. I'm, I'm getting like scary old. That was 18 fucking years ago. Holy shit. Holy shit, yeah. Well, you guys don't have a comedy club at there. What the, what do you want from me? All you have is that beautiful land, your syrup, your foliage. Um, it's not like I haven't come to Albany. Why don't you get in a car and come down to civilization? I got to go up there to your fucking moonshine still. And he goes, he goes, so how are you going to pass the time? I don't see you as someone who fantasizes about shooting a moose 
I know you're you're drinking, but Vermont has what's considered. I guess you meant not drinking, but Vermont has considered uh, what's considered the best beer in the world right now. It's called Heady Topper. Holy shit, Bill! It's good. Stores get their shipment Tuesday and sell out by Wednesday. It's fucking awesome. Here's an article. I'll give you guys the link so they can sell out in the same day. Uh, also, what what are you ex- what are your experiences with Vermont? Um, I I love Vermont. I'm a, I'm a New England guy. I grew up out there. I go to Vermont and I think I would love to own <clears throat> a house up here. I'm <clears throat> sorry. If I could somehow survive in this business, um, you know, I would live in a I would live in a place like that. I think I would go a little bit crazy because I definitely need a little bit of action. I def I like the city. I mean, I'm a suburb guy. I'm not a country guy, so um, I don't know, dude. That actually sounds great. If I could get a fucking log cabin. <laughs> I know you don't live in log cabins out there, but uh, I don't. You know this fucking business. I, you know, I'm tired, man. I did a lot of road work, and the more road you do, just the more you you need a fucking vacation. But once you start selling tickets on the road, you get afraid. If I take a fucking week off, they're gonna move on to the next guy. Um, you know, I actually had somebody, uh, some email I was reading. And they were complimenting my act and they said, hey, Bill, do you ever think some young whippersnapper is going to come along and pass you and replace you? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. It always happens. If Jordan can get too old for the NBA, I can't get too old for stand up. You know, at some point, no matter how much you stay informed. You know, you're going to be doing those matinee shows with whoever's still alive from your fucking fan base. (laughs) I don't mind it. Um, It's supposed to happen. What I'm supposed to do is pick up the comedy torch and run with it as far as I can. And when I collapse, I fucking hold it up like the dude trying not to spill his white Russian. We got a beverage here, man. Um, And then the next person comes along. They grab it and they run with it. And you fucking cheer them on. Tell them to take it to the next level. And you know why that is, sir? Because stand-up does not belong to me. It's not mine. It's an art form. It's a privilege to be able to do it and make a living at it. So I try to respect that and I'll do it as long as I can. But like, you know, I mean, shit. (laughs) It fucking happens to everybody. Which is why I don't have the new cell phone. It's why I drive a seven-year-old hybrid. I only have one fucking TV. You hear echo, echo in my fucking house because I'm I all my money goes to paying this fucking thing down. So uh, because I know that day is going to come, that fucking day is going to come where I'm going to be sitting there. You don't want me anymore. But what about the show I did in 96 in Vermont? Um, Yeah, it happens to everybody. All right. I guess that's why you're supposed to have kids someday. So you can watch them, you know, pass it on to them. That is one of my goals, though. I never want to become some bitter person. I always want to be cheering on whoever's coming next. You know, that's the way you should be. You shouldn't be a fucking dick about it. Um, You know, and then also knowing that they're coming, that drives you. (laughs) Like, let's see how long I can keep these fucking plates spinning before they, and eventually my arms are going to get tired. I'm going to be finished. Ah, Jesus, that's depressing. Whatever. What are you going to do? All right, swimming. Hey, Billy White Thighs. Ah, shit. That one actually hurt. It's fucking true. Fucking wallpaper paste there. Um, You ever think about installing a lap pool? Yes, I have. Before we bought this house, I looked at another house and they had it there. I didn't like the house, but I love that. I think that that would be great. Not like a lap pool. You mean like the thing where you, you basically... It's like long enough for you to lay down unless you're a basketball player and just start swimming... And you're swimming against this current? One of those ones? What do you mean literally a pool? He says, anyways, or maybe joining a gym that has a pool. It's a full body workout. And anytime I see old dudes swimming, I imagine they're really healthy. I knew swimmers in college and they ate and drank like animals, but they were always really cut because they swam miles every day. I think the hardest part of getting into the gym 
into a gym pool routine is having to see other people. Also, the first few times when you're inevitably tired after half a lap. Plus, there's no sharks in the water. Um, I love how you guys even write it in the Boston accent now. He said, so we don't have to hear you cry about your inner fears. My inner fear is getting old and weak. So I started swimming and it's great. Uh, see how we brought that back around? Very nice. Very nice. Um, yeah, no, dude, you're, you're doing yourself a service. You really are. Uh, I, I am a firm belief that you should work out your entire life. You should always do it. I mean, I'm not saying go out and play full court basketball. I mean, in your, even in your thirties and fifties, just get shin splints and fucking up your feet. Uh, I, I think that you should do some form of exercising. I love swimming. I, um, I, I, I am concerned about, I guess, Olympic swimmers haven't died of any cancer, so the chlorine, I guess, isn't that bad. But that is the one thing. When you jump into a pool, you're jumping into a bunch of chemicals. But I guess that's better than jumping into, uh, you know, what the chemicals are killing. So we'll leave it at that. Yeah. You know what? You know, I'm going to look that up right now. Let's look up what one of those little stationary lap things are. Let's see what this is. For the person who has everything... And then I'm going to do my, the final advertising for this fucking week. All right, what do we got here? Let's see here. Lap pool. Let me just look this up. Oh, there it is. Custom lap pools. What? Fuck you. Get the fuck out of here. This says 17-foot swim spa is 23000 $900. They call it an endless pool. Are you fucking kidding me? Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. All this shit just popped up when I went on this website. Now, now you know I'm going to get all these fucking spam emails about endless pool fucking... Yeah, well, let's see this. The 17-foot... Endless Pool Spa features a large exercise area that is ideal for swimming, aquatic exercise, and fun. With easy access, full-depth stairs, and up to two jets. And with over 20 jets, you can exercise, relax, and enjoy increased family time in the convenient... Yeah, you ever want to piss with your whole family? Let's get a lap pool. Um, improve your health and well-being on an endless pool. All right, here's the dimensions. 17 feet by, uh, well, I guess now they're doing inches. 204 inches, which comes out to 17 feet by 91 and a half inches. By 54 and a half inches. I guess that's how deep it is. I don't know what the fuck. I didn't know what I'm saying. 54 is not five feet deep, is it? What is that? Four feet, four and a half? I love this shit here. This thing is $23,000 and they have a little button here that says add to the cart. Like there's other shit that you're going to be getting with this. All right, they have a 10 foot one. Oh my God. Oh shit, that's just, you might as well just take, use that place to take a dump. How much is this one? Add to cart. 15,009. Fuck you. I'll go jump in a goddamn dirty pond. I guess it is amazing that you, you're, 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 you're literally swimming against a current that doesn't exist. All right. Now you're getting to some cheaper ones here. Here's, here's the fucking the Hyundai version for 10 grand. Oh, that thing's a joke. What is it? Is that a hot tub? Oh, go fuck yourself. Well, yeah, you know, I guess I thought about it. I've definitely thought about it. Now that I know how much it costs. Holy shit, I have to take a fucking second mortgage out of my house to get one of those. They are cool as shit, though. Images for lap pools. Dude, why did you do this? Now I'm going to sit here. Look at that one. That looks like a real pool. Oh, that is a real pool. <laughs> Who the fuck lives here? Mark Spitz. Keeping fit with home lap pool. 
Now that's now you don't give a fuck about your kids if you got one of those. You get this skinny pool that nobody can jump into without breaking their goddamn necks, and it's for you and your fucking gray chest hair. Oh, whatever. Do you guys really want to sit here and listen to me fucking reading about lap pools? Wow, those things are cool as hell, though. Um, yeah, I, I thought about getting one until I saw how much they were. Now that I know how much they are, I, I'm not, I am no longer interested. I need a friend. I need a rich friend with a fucking lap pool. Good Lord. Just a pool in general. How fucking cool is that? Fucking indoor pool. Indoor lap pool. Who's this fucking banker who has this shit? Indoor lap pool. You know what's funny with me? I would do I would get one of those. Okay, let's just say I could afford that. I'd get one of those fucking things and then within uh a month I'd be bored and I'd I would go and do something else. I'm the worst. And I'd still owe all that money. Tranquil lap pool. Jesus Christ. You know what? I'm going to look at these fucking things. Anybody out there sell lap pools? How many fucking, how many of these do you sell a month? Jesus Christ. I'm going to get on one of those fucking home makeover shows. All right. I'm going to have them redo the wiring in my house and fucking put in a lap pool. And then I'll go there and I'll fucking act. Oh, my God, a lap pool. Jump around and hug everybody that fucking did it. You know. Get on Pimp My Pool, whatever the fuck the show is. All right. Who gives a fuck? All right. Anyways, that's the uh, that's the podcast for this week, everybody. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope it was funny, even though I did it on a Sunday. And if you didn't learn anything, it's not my fault because I got ADD over there. Um, That's it. That's the podcast for this week. Go fuck yourselves. And um, please watch the Olympic hockey, speed skate and curling and all that shit. Enjoy the Olympics. You know, even though the water doesn't run, even though they don't like gay people over there. God damn it. These athletes.